Who's your pen again? Hey. No. My TD Bank pen. I'll find it. There's a, oh, maybe it's right here. Uh, uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. Uh, we opened the session this evening at 6 p.m. as we were uh, discussing some litigation and potential litigation. Mr. Barros, correct? We good to go? We got the thumbs up. All right. Mr. Barros, make sure that we do that appropriately. So we'll move right into announcements. Madam Clerk. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, first, I would like to wish my husband a happy birthday tonight. He's not watching. He's out having dinner. <laughs> but um, I'm thinking about him. And I only have one other announcement tonight, which is Wareham's Coffee Hour. Our very own Mr. White has been so uh, good with these coffee hours, bringing information. And the past few weeks, he's been bringing candidates for the upcoming election. A chance to have a coffee break and chat with interesting guests. This week will be me. Uh, the ca a candidate for a three-year term on the Wareham Board of Selectmen, as well as uh, Mrs. Rhonda Vugan. Did I say that correctly? Vugan. Vugan. No. We all practice this at OPL. Um. Can we come in? Can we, can we come can in? Heck, all that. That might be fun. You good time on Thursday morning? Candidate. Can you post the meeting for Thursday? No, we can't. We can't wait. It's too late. You're lucky. I'm, I'm a lucky You're duck. Because <laughs> uh, that would be fun. Mrs. Fugan is a candidate for a three-year term on the Wareham School Board. This is 9 a.m. Thursday, March 28th, 2013, room 225, right here in the Wareham Multi-Service Center. Any announcements, Mr. Teitelbaum? Uh, just a brief one. Uh, on March 23rd, I celebrated my fifth year of being tobacco-free, and that brought to mind that we... Uh, Very good. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, smoking cessation programs in this state. Uh, you can contact the Board of Health or the Selectman's Office to learn more. Uh, tobacco is a tough thing to quit. I smoked a pack and a half of butts a day for 30 years. Uh, but if you put your mind to it, you can do it. It's the best thing I've done for myself probably in 30-something years. Uh, and it's amazing how fast the body recovers once you give them up. So I'm not going to lecture anybody, but uh, think about trying to stay healthy. Think about trying to get off the butts. And if you need help, call the uh, Selectman's Office or the Board of Health. Mr. Chair, I think that's directed at a few of us. Wow. <laughs> I see a bunch of people smiling out there, too. <laughs> I'm not sure they appreciated your announcement. <laughs> Mr. Slavin? Onset Village Music. They have an event on May 19th, Sunday, 2 to 4. It says 2 or 4 p.m. Choose one, students and parents. Onset Campgrounds Function Hall in Onset. And there's no cost to, to participants. Can't speak today. Normal fee for tickets for family, friends, and fans. Adults seven dollars in advance, eight dollars at the door. Children under twelve, three fifty in advance, four dollars at the door. Lap sitters are free. Thank you. Uh, You're not going there. Me? <laughs> oh, I I'll have an announcement hopefully soon about Onset Village Music. I know about it, but I'm I'm under secrecy. But I will say this about them. Um, since you asked, you know, there's a business that's been in Wareham uh, for several years. Sue and, and her husband um, have really um, dedicated themselves to Wareham. Uh, they recently moved, as most of you know, out behind Mr. Chris, out behind the barber shop there. Um, and I was in there uh, Thursday. Uh, Sean and I used to take lessons there. Dolores is looking at violin lessons now. Um, so. Uh, they're a great business in our community. If you can come out and support their event, um, I think that would be great. When was it again? I'll give them an extra plug. Uh, oh, you got to look it up. Short, short term memory. That was May 19th. Now, are you going to play an instrument in the recital? I actually have taken some piano lessons with them recently. Oh, good. I thought I had uh, seen you there uh, or heard you were there. Uh, I don't have any. I just wanted to reiterate his announcement. Oh, there are also a number of uh, various activities for families and children uh, throughout Wareham and Onset this Saturday. Uh, I hear that there may be some appearances from the Easter Bunny and a couple Easter egg hunts. So you can check online. There's a calendar of events on the newspaper sites and um, get all the details. 
I am looking around, looking to see if I see Mrs. Boyer here. Nope, not see tonight. Mrs. Boyer here? We'll keep an eye out for them if they're a few minutes late. Well, she has a young man who has who was embarking on a special trip, and I asked him to come and tell us about it. So they were going to try to be here at 7. Citizens Is that it? Pro yep, citizens Anyone would like to uh, approach the board this evening? Right to left, Mrs. Oh, Madam Moderator. Right on up. Thank you, Claire Smith, town moderator. Just to let everyone know, we will be having a pre-town meeting right. on Thursday, April 11th, I believe it is, uh, at 6.30 in the auditorium of the town hall. Um, so we hope people will come and ask their questions. Hopefully we can do some explanations of what a TIF is, um, try to get some understanding before people come to town meeting so that uh, when it comes time to vote, they'll have a better understanding of what, what that all means. So we'd love to see people on Thursday, April 11th at 6.30. Secondly, Hurricane Sandy Coalition um, just sent down to- April 11th. April 11th. Town Hall Auditorium. Uh, Hurricane Sandy Coalition just sent down $2,000 worth of Home Depot gift cards so that they can purchase sheetrock to start rebuilding their homes. So we're real pleased that we were able to do that and it should have arrived sometime today. So I want to thank everyone in the community who participated and stepped up to the plate to make that happen. I think that was a huge thing that we were able to do for them and they're so appreciative. And thank you and the committee for doing such a fine job. Oh, Mr. Chair, Madam Moderator, you had spoke last time uh, about putting together a group of volunteers and you had thrown out the date of April 6th, which would be a week from Saturday. Right. Um, I haven't had a huge response. I've only actually had two people that um, have stepped up to the plate and I'm going to try to make some calls. Actually, it's on my agenda for tomorrow of things to do to reach out to some people I believe will want to go and see if we can make that happen. So you're still looking for still people? Still looking. Um, you don't have to have any capability to be able to use a hammer or a screwdriver or a nail. Um, spring is here. The snow is gone. I'm sure there's a lot of cleaning up, even just carrying uh, tape in or the, the buckets of mud, whatever. I'm sure they will find something for us to do. So we'd love to take a contingency down on Saturday, April 6th. Okay. okay. Thank you. Very good. Next, Mrs. Heath. Dorothy Heath, District 2. Um, I've noticed that under sewer business, we are no longer uh, listing um, financing for contract two. Is that because we found financing? No, I think it's because um, last week I asked them to take it off because it, um, we weren't going to have that because Mr. Campina wasn't here and we didn't have anything else and it looks like it's just a typo. Um, it's supposed to be on there every week until yeah, we find it. I think the last time it was on was February 19th. Yeah. So. It'll be on there again. Okay. Yeah. Because every week I'm, until we find the money. Because I'm curious as to know where the money's going to come from. So thank you. Next. Sandy Slavin, Precinct 3. You have three minutes because I have a hearing at 7.15. I will be quick. Okay. Thank you. There isn't anybody in you town who realizes how much time and effort it takes to become a selectman to do all your research and what like that, but I am disappointed in this board. Huh? Almost 10 months ago, this board agreed to review all the policies and procedures for the selectman. I, at one time, just after Christmas, I saw five on the agenda. I said, oh great, they're starting. They were never discussed. Oh, I didn't give you a week's notice. We don't have a full board here, whatever the reason. Then they disappeared off the agenda. Folks, some of those policies go back to 1988. They're 25 years old. Please consider reviewing those policies. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Paul? Sorry, Mr. Ciccatelli. Paul's fine. Paul Ciccatelli, Precinct 1. 
Um, I'm here as the chairman of the Cable Advisory Committee, which is a, a advisory committee to you folks. And I'm just here to as, as a form of a notification as well um, that uh, the assessment uh, survey has been completed and is ready for us to pull the trigger on and, and uh, make available to the people of the town. How are you going to do that? Uh, the, uh, it's it's a, it's be? it's going to be available on the uh, town website. Um, there'll there'll be a button for it. Matt, I've talked to Matt about it, and there'll be a button for uh, to make it easy to find. And we're uh, welcoming anybody who uh, is a cable subscriber to um, fill out the form and let us know uh, uh, so that we're prepared for when the negotiations begin for the new cable contract between uh, Comcast and Verizon. When is that going to be uh, up? The Comcast uh, is no, the up. Uh, the the uh the survey. Oh, the, the survey will have have uh, out for six months. No, when is it going to start? Oh, do you know? As soon as I pull the trigger, which is which is when I leave this table, soon. Okay. <laughs> it should be available. Uh, it'll be available tomorrow. Mr. And maybe cable is gonna is cable going to um, advertise that like on the. It'll it will be on WCTV as well. Yes, Good. and it'll be announced in the newspapers as well. Perfect. Okay, that was my question. If there yeah. was going to be a press release, as, as, as much publicity as we can get about, it. we need as many people answering the questions as possible. So, to Facebook everybody who's out there, I don't think we can do it on Facebook, right? But you can get people on Facebook. There's a lot of people on Facebook, I guess. Anyway, we can get the word well, out. Well, WCTV yes. has a. I don't know if you could use that, but what's that? You know, put the publicity out there. Oh yeah, it'll be on the bulletin boards, and and uh, I'll, I'll probably go on uh, on the Gumbo Show. And um, any any kind of publicity we can use, including, by the way, uh, if you guys could announce it every Tuesday at the beginning of this meeting, that would be great as well. Um, as soon so as it's it, out there, you let us know. We'll put yes, it on it, the it, uh, it, regular it's, announcement. It's actually uh, it's on yeah. the website. It's it just all, all we need to do is put the link on. So that's, uh, that's a very short process. That's a matter of moments to do that. So as soon as I talk to Matt, we'll get that uh, up and running. Outstanding. Good work. Thank you. All right. That's, that's it. all I have for you now. Great. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Uh, we have a uh, 715 hearing. You I okay? Sure. Yeah. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. We have a um, 715 hearing for an application for annual Common Vic All Alcoholic Beverages License from Bay Point Country Club, LLC, Shannon Woodward Manager, 10 Bay Point Drive, Onset Mass, under the provisions of Chapter 138 of Mass General Law for the year 2013. I move to open the public hearing. I have a motion made. A motion made and seconded. Um, was, that Mr. was that Mr. Slavin? Mr. Okay. Slavin. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Good evening. <coughs> Good evening. How are you? Good, and you? Good. Uh, if you want to uh, tell us what um, what the application entails, that would be gr that would be a great start. Introduce okay. yourself first. My name is Shannon Wooded. I'm the general manager at the Bay Point Club at Onset. Um, well, what we're trying to do is um, have a year-round license for the pavilion because what we're, what we're trying to bring as many many banquets as we can to the facility. Um, we've been doing a, lot of ch doing a lot of changes. Excuse me, one second, sir. And with respect, if we could take conversations in the hallway, please. Thank you. Proceed, sir. <laughs> what we're doing is we've been doing a lot of work at the clubhouse and the pavilion, trying to make it much better and for the town and us also. And I know the years past has had a seasonal license, but we're a year-round facility, and we're trying to bring banquets there all January, February, March, all winter long. And uh, we're actually f we're actually remodeling more of the pavilion right now. We're doing the nice gardens out there where the pool used to be, and so we can do weddings and, like I said, different parties, Christmas parties, and winter functions inside. And like I said, we're just looking for a yearly license instead of a seasonal because we want to be year-round in the banquet facility, so we can serve more people than just in the clubhouse. Very good. Does anyone would like to speak in uh, favor or opposition of the uh, plan? Nothing. Okay. I'm going to close the hearing. Uh, I move to discussion. I move to close the public hearing uh, on the matter of the Bay Point Country Club uh, Common Vic All Alcoholic Beverages License. Second. Motion made and seconded on the question. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? Four zero zero. Questions, Mr. Teitelbaum? No, I did flip through here. I, I see uh, Selectman Winslow furiously flipping through, maybe looking for the tips, but I did find it in here, so there is one. Uh, 
it's a big package. It's hard to find, I know, but I just wanted to get that out there. Other than that, no questions. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Slavin. This is going to be a full year-round license. The seasonal license has basically been turned, not yes. turned in, but yes, paperwork's I, been yes. sent back in because mm -hmm. it was still outstanding. Okay, thank you. Mrs. Winslow. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do not have any questions for uh, Mr. Wood Woodard. I certainly wish them luck in their endeavor. It's a beautiful facility. Thank you. Yeah, and, I, and I think, uh, Shannon, uh, I, do, I do want to take a minute because – um, it's important for people to know what what's transpiring. Um, we had a seasonal license with you um, at the pavilion, but you have a year-round license at the the pro shop or the clubhouse, whatever the, you call that these days. Um, and in the off season, there was a uh, a piece of mass general law that allowed us to to give Bay Point, you notice they were coming in for a lot of one-day licenses for events and functions. Um, and we believe that that was legitimate under the law because the town owns that building. Remember, this is a building that's owned by Town of Wareham, managed by Cedar, and leased to um, the folks who run the, the uh, street. Uh, give me Stone Street? Stone Street. Corporation. Stone Street. There we go. And so um, Mr. Bowen got involved and others, uh, and they did allow the one-day licenses but gave us a warning that uh, because you had a seasonal license, um, the one-days were becoming a problem because you already had a license. So, mm -hmm. And not only that, but this is a, a key. As you know, I'm a resident of Onset. This, this business is key to our development, economic development in the town especially in the village um, and with their with the new owners in the function business growing um, this was really needed to make sure that um, they could book out into future years and often in the winter without having to deal with a one-day license every time we turned around so I want to thank you for your patience and I was glad that we were able to get this done for you um, and if you have a five-minute <coughs> promo or anything else you'd like to add, we'd be happy to listen to it. No, I just I appreciate what you guys are doing for us, and uh, we'll definitely show that we're doing the right thing. Congratulations. Thank okay. you, guys. All right. Anything else? Mrs. Windsor. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the application for annual Common Vic All-Alcoholic Beverage License from Bay Point Country Club, LLC, Shannon Woodward Manager, 10 Bay Point Drive, Onset Mass, under the provisions of Chapter 138 of Mass Journal Law for the year 2013. Motion made. Second. Second. Question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 400. Congratulations, Thank Shannon. You very much. Good Thank luck you. to you. If you need anything, please let us know. Okay. Is that your paper you're leaving behind? Okay. <laughs> All right. Next up. Uh, Mr. Chair, do you want to just continue with the other two items because we have people here and I don't see the applicant yet for the Community Preservation Committee? Yeah, that would be fine. Okay, so we have a use of town roads by Church of the Good Shepherd, Pro Project Bread, care of Reverend Bernier. Good evening. Good evening. How are you this evening? Wonderful. It's good to see you again. Good to see you as well. So we are having, wish to have our, our fourth annual Walk for Hunger. The Walk for Hunger raises money for Project Bread, which helps many communities throughout the state of Massachusetts with their food programs, food banks, food pantries and such, and some of them right here in Wareham. Last year at our Walk for Hunger, we raised about $10,000. So we're hoping to equal that or perhaps even more this year. And the Wareham area uh, churches are working together on this project. So we seek your permission to help us to, to continue this fundraising effort in our community. Outstanding. Um, any questions? No, thank you. I noticed last year, it's, it's a very nice event. Uh, there was one little issue which you may want to work on your end. Uh, Atlantic Marine rents the steel building at, at Tremont, and also, of course, the c company store has things going on that day as well. And there's a little bit of traffic issue. I was a little concerned with the kids and stuff. And, you know, even though we had some police, that's something you might want to look into a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Except for that, everything is fine. Thank okay. You. <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. Winslow? 
I, I don't have any questions. I mean, this is the kind of event that, um, sadly, in one of the, rich, the richest country in the world we even need, mm. that there are hungry people here. Um, but good luck to you. Thank you. Great. Reverend, is there anything else you want to talk about for that day? The, the walk Times. is a five-mile five walk. Um, it's, again, taking place on May 5th. It begins at 1 o'clock at Church of the Good Shepherd and proceeds uh, down uh, Sandwich Road to the Church of Nazarene, which is sort of our halfway point, and then Depot Street to Minot Avenue, back to Main Street, and back to, to Good Shepherd Church. Uh, it's wonderful participation. We have over 100 walkers last year, and it's just a, a tribute to this community of really wanting to work together to help um, those who are less fortunate than us. Outstanding. For more information, you can contact Church of the Good Shepherd or St. Patrick's Church. Okay. I move to approve the application for use of town roads by the Church of Good Shepherd uh, for the Project Bread, a care of Reverend Dan Bernier, 74 High Street, Wareham, Mass., for the use of town roads for the Wareham Walk for Hunger. The walk Second. starts at the Church of the Good Shepherd down Sandwich Road to the Church of the Nazarene along Route 28 before turning on to Depot Street, then to Minot Ave to Main Street, then back to the Church of the Good Shepherd, May 5th. 2013, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., it is understood and agreed that the town will be held harmless from all liability as to damage to property or injuries to any persons. Second. Thank you. There we go. Motion made and seconded. Anything else on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 400. Zero zero. Congratulations, Reverend. Good luck. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. If you need anything, let us know. Thank you. Okay, we also have a use of town roads by the Wareham Little League, care of. Antoinette Walsh, and this is for their opening day parade, <laughs> which is a great event. Uh, they're looking to, uh, the parade will start at Elm Street to Route 28 to the Little League Field on Charge Pond Road on April 21st, 2013, with a rain date of April 28th from 1130 to 1230. Good evening, how are you? Um, you want to introduce great. yourself and just give yourself a little promo? That would be yeah. great. Uh, my name is Antoinette Walsh, and I'm here to represent the Wayham Little League as a board member and also the secretary for the board. Uh, just to discuss the uh, opening uh, day parade, which is a great event, and uh, everyone's welcome. We're gonna, we have plenty of events planned, starting at 1130 at Tremont, and then the kids walk. We actually um, have the Wayham varsity baseball team participating this year, walking with them to try to encourage the younger ones to look up to the older ones to see where they started. So. We have a lot of things uh, new and different this year, so. And you'll be putting the signs up? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. We'll get Do that straightened out all today while she's here. <laughs> this isn't the dunk tank thing, is it? No. no. Oh. No, okay. no dunk tank. No, but they put up the signs. I remember last year the lady was uh, calling. Was it you? No. That was calling me, trying to say it was okay to put the banner no, up. No, that yeah. was, uh, I don't I forget you're... her name, but. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that's all included. In that's this all thing. included. You're all set to go once the board votes. I, uh, any when you do do the dunk tank, I know that Mr. Teitelbaum and Mr. Slavin were, were just so depressed that they didn't get to do it last year. So We'll send them a personal invite. <laughs> please. Uh, no, we weren't. <laughs> Not at all. I have pictures of that. <laughs> um, Mr. Teitelbaum. Uh, no questions. We look forward to receiving the dunk tank invitation. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my senior moment a few minutes ago. I was talking to the Good Shepherd while I was really talking about the Little League. My comments to him was really for your event, ah. where there, there was issues. I apologize. It's one of those days. Now, poor Reverend goes home. and if he He's going to try. The rerun, he he, he know, did look confused. Have, I have him confused. <laughs> He's trying to figure out what the kids were doing. But, really it's, nail. but really, it's you that's confused. <laughs> well, actually, it was only about a five-mile difference, so it's not a real big deal. But... It's the traffic between the two It lines. just happened because yeah. I was at the event and went by it a couple of times. And it We're just gonna, got, a little, it got a little touchy because I was concerned with the kids. That's all. We're so actually having a lot more of the board members on site to good. keep people from crossing and then mm -hmm. stopping. And I know. think if you were to go in and see John Cornish at Atlantic Marine, let them know you're going to be in there and out because they bring sure. their <laughs> trucks and boats that moving in and out of there as yep. well. That's all. Absolutely. If you see the Reverend, apologize for me. I, I think the Reverend... <laughs> <laughs> he's probably thinking, he's driving down saying, geez, we only had 100 walkers. No wonder why there was a bunch of kids down, down so the tree. Mine now. <laughs> five miles away. So, 
<laughs> He'll be first in line for the dunk tank for you, Mr. Slavin. Oh, that's uh, funny. Well, at least we can laugh at ourselves anyway. Poor Reverend. Okay. Mrs. Winslow. Uh, I, I think it's a great idea. I think it's been fun in, in past years, and I'm really happy there's no dunk tank in April. <laughs> Uh, Mrs. Winslow. I move to approve the Wareham Little League uh, application for use of town roads, care of Antoinette Walsh, P.O. Box 614, uh, for the Little League annual parade. The parade starts at Elm Street to Route 28 to the Little League Field on Charge Pond Road. April 21st, 2013 at 11.30 a.m. Rain date April 28th, 2013. It is understood and agreed <laughs> that... Sorry that the town will be held harmless from all liability as to damage to property or injury to any persons. Second. Must be seconded. Anything else on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four, zero, zero. Good luck. Thank See, you. See, you're still laughing about it, too. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, you need, to call, you need to call the reverend tonight. The poor guy's probably, he's driving home trying to figure out what's going on. Yeah. He's going he's gonna to present to his committee. What do we do about those kids at Tremont now? <laughs> well, the look good. on it, the look on his face was, but he, he wasn't going to question him. So I'll, I'll actually buy him his first five, five uh, shots at the dunk That's tank. Funny. Okay. okay. Next up, we'll go back up. I still don't see the, um, under the consent agenda, we have authorization to sign bills and documents. There's no bills or documents. We have an appointment to the Community Preservation Committee, Open Space Committee representative, and this uh, would be Mr. Leggett. He doesn't have to be here. What this is is a standard procedure. The Open Space Committee has a member on CPC. This is just a formality that we're approving it. Yeah, I just figured that out. I had a senior moment, too. <laughs> okay. That's two, yeah, that two for the day. The way they voted to appoint him to that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I move to appoint. No, there's no appoint. No, we no. have. Do we still have to? We'll just fill out All right. Photo. Yeah. Okay. They gave us a sheet. Yeah. I and move. We'll get a copy of that. When it's done, we'll send a copy back to the uh, to the committee he was appointed. From. Can I nominate you for the dunk tank too? This I move. This is their opening day parade. That dunk tank was cold. Yeah, no, but I think that was a different day. Oh. I'm not going to comment on TV about okay. that. Okay. I move to appoint uh, Mr. Joseph Leggett uh, to a member of the Community Preservation Commission Open Space Committee Rep to a term to expire no later than June 30th, 2014. Second. Motion made and seconded. All right, anything else on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Okay, that brings us up to, uh, we have sore business. Is Mr. Kim oh, wait. here? Yeah. Where? I did. I said there's no, yeah. I don't Mr. see him. Mr. Chairman, he wouldn't be able to come on tonight for. Uh, Are you covering us? For the uh, the Springborn section for the the Rosebrook, there's uh, I can provide some information on there. Okay. Yeah, it's all part of the uh, the original. Uh, but I thought he would be here. Well, Mr. Sullivan will deal with the questions. Okay. I don't think they'll be hard. Next up, Mrs. Winslow. Are, are we going to do the SOAR business? Yes. Okay, so we have the allocation of sorge flow for the Rosebrook Business Park. All right. There is a letter. It looks like an old letter. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Sullivan, what is it that we need to do? Uh, Mr. Campina had asked me just to let the board know. I believe there, the request is for, uh, for a flow of 10000 Ten thousand on there. Uh, so, if the question was, is there enough available? When the Springborn pump station was brought up, there was an extra thirty thousand gallons capacity in there. So, by putting this ten, these ten thousand, taking them out, there's still an extra twenty thousand available. So, it does not end the uh, the available usage. That's and this ten thousand is part of the original allocation mm -hmm. that was that was given. But they do come and ask whenever they're going to take more. Correct. That's correct. That's. Are there any other questions, Mrs. Winslow? Do we don't need to take any action on well, this. Well, you should give them a vote uh, so that Mr. Campina is just to back them up. 
I think he did want to vote just to okie dokie the 10,000. Correct? Okay, yes. so clarify for me what vote does he want? Well, as the sewer commissioners, you just approving his request for 10,000 uh, 10, gallons. Okay, I move to approve Mr. Campina's request for 10,000 gallons per day of flow. Right. To the Rosebrook Business Park. Motion made. Second. Second question. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Okay, next we have the Town of Bourne usage fee third quarter billing. Mm -hmm. I move to approve the Town of Bourne usage fee third quarter billing in the amount of $59,950.97. Second. Second. Seconded. Question? All in favor? Question, Mr. Slate. Quickly, Derek, do we have any? Uh, Sorry. Wow. Yeah. You got well, loud all of a sudden. I, sure I can hear you. Is there any question for uh, Mr. Campeter on the on the actual bill? We're all in agreement. They had, he had not brought this, this okay. section up. With Thank you. There. Anything else? Mm -mm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Okay, next up under town business, we have the discussion regarding Springtown meeting start date. And if memory serves me, this is the policy uh, regarding which date we, because Springtown meeting has two actual dates, the election and then the start of general business at town meeting. And so which date to count back from so it's consistent and as everybody remembers we had a long talk about making sure there's enough time uh, so mr slaven i believe wrote the policy which states the date used for triggering the start of wareham springtown meeting is the first tuesday in the month of april as outlined in the town charter and bylaws all dates for filings reports meetings etc as required by charter and bylaws in conjunction with springtown meeting will commence from the first Tuesday in the month of April. This policy shall take effect immediately, which actually next year. Next year. So that's the deal with that, Mr. Chairman. Any uh <coughs> any discussion, questions? I th I think that we had put this off for a week or so because we were going to have the uh, town clerk in if I remember right in case she had any input, but uh, She's not come in at all on this. Because uh, town meeting basically by charter starts the second, the first Tuesday of the month of April. And that's pretty much black and white. He's not really writing a policy. He's just restating what actually exists. But, you're, but okay, so we've taken the direction, just so I'm clear, we've taken the direction that we're writing a board of selectmen policy to direct future boards in the future is how we're interpreting the, ch the charter. Yes. Okay. I got it. As opposed to as opposed to putting an article on the warrant in November and clarifying it. No, it's not necessary. We'll see how this works next year. And then if we have issues with time and spacing, I'm sure the moderator will come back and make a recommendation that we come back possibly with a an article for a town meeting, you know, to actually change the charter if there's issues with time. But as of right now we're gonna just try this first. Take the simple step first. Uh -huh. If it, makes, if it makes sense to the board, I'm fine with that. As long as we have some clarification, some policy to go by, works for me. Well, Mr. Chair, it's my understanding that, that that's under the control of the Board of Selectmen is to set those dates and things. So if we decide this is how we want to do it, and we're just yeah, no, memorializing fine. it. I know there's always a question about that. Is it from the, from the night on the Monday night that we start or the Tuesday? It actually gives us a lot more time to work through the articles and. All right. I just didn't know which way. If you want to try the policy first, I'm good with that. Or I thought we were going to do an article maybe for November. No, to we clarify the actual language to put it in there. No, I think the the basis was first just to clarify that date, so everybody's on the same page. Right. Try for a year. If we have issues with timing and stuff, then we'll go back and actually write an article. Okay. Can I have a motion. I move to approve policy number 1302, previously read into the record. Second. Say it again. What was that? I move to approve policy number 1302,
previously read into the record. Second. Motion made and second. Anything else on the question? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Thank you, Alan, for the work on that. You pass that over to Rich. Next up. That was Rich's. Okay, next we have uh, the discussion regarding the um, cable contract with WCTV. But, Mr. Chair, can I just ask, can we do the senior work-off program? Because I, th I think she's here, and I think that conversation may might end up being it, it, the stuff is in our packets, uh. if they don't mind because it's only going to take us a couple minutes. Okay. Well, that's fine with me. Good with uh, everybody else? They're fine. all nodding. I think Mrs. Shashara is here. Do you mind? No. Well, we could do, we do it in order. We could take it out of order. It's up to you. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to switch to a senior mm -hmm. work-off program. Okay. Yep. Move on. Well, here it is. And we have the clean policy and the clean application. We do not, however, have Mrs. Miller tonight. My name is Janice Churchill Corliss, and I'm here to um, talk with you about the policies that were, or the recommendations that I mentioned last week on the tax work off, senior tax work off. Okay. Okay. Anybody have any questions? Mr. Sullivan, have you looked at the numbers on this to make sure that um, we were then our. Boundaries, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a recommendation for numbers and what I believe we should do for our for our fiscal status. Okay. And it would be as follows: a maximum amount of twenty-five thousand five hundred dollars per senior workoff member, which would be fifty people altogether. eight dollars per hour and that would be approximately 62 and a half hours altogether last year I believe we were just under fifty thousand dollars for it and this would this would help out one of the things that the assessor's office does is just says if there's enough money within our overlay that we've put aside right uh, what was that number you said? Twenty-five five. Twenty-five thousand dollars altogether. Five hundred dollars per person. So that'd be fifty people. The other part of that is, once everything has been vetted so that they qualify, I think we should then have a lottery system on there <laughs> to make sure that it's uh, it's as fair as can be. Okay. Um, one of the questions I had last week was, who are you, um, the ethics training, I know we had added the confidentiality piece. Um, who is, who is uh, responsible for this, for you, to you? I arm wrestled Susan Green and won, so. <laughs> <laughs> is that why the lights were out there Thursday? <laughs> Congratulations, Susan. She has a lot of experience with it, um, so she does, and she's. Does that, how does that? Work. How does that work for you? Oh, I mean, I've dealt with Susan. You've done the uh, program. You've managed it. Does this seem uh, okay with you? Yeah, it, mean, it should be able to work. Um, it's just that I might need a little help with the lottery and understanding how how that's going to go about. So your contact person. Uh, has just is been named. Sue. Yes, yeah. Sue. Um, I've worked with Sue for two years, so. And then, if you have any issues there, you can always see Mr. Sullivan. Yeah. Um, so at least, I feel better going in with with numbers. We have a, a source of management. We have somebody responsible for it. Um, please, uh, don't call the selectmen uh, to change your assignment. Um, look, we don't have anything to do with where you work off or what they ask you to work off. Um, so please work with the individuals who are managing the program. It's very uncomfortable when people call and say, oh, they put me on the beach, can you get me in 
I, I understand. Yeah. Um, and I didn't like the phone calls. I don't like them when I get them, and, I, and it's really up to the town. This is, a, this is really a job that people are doing because they are getting paid. Um, and the work needs to be done where Mr. Sullivan um, and others find a need. So I would ask my brothers and sisters to help them with that by not, uh, by not, by transferring those phone calls directly to Susan Green and let her deal with it. No. Sorry, Susan. Mr. Chair. Any Can other I questions on this? One I question. just have. Uh, you have a question? I just have one question. Ahead, sure. the, the lottery is only necessary if we exceed 50, correct? Correct. If we okay. exceed 50, but we haven't exceeded applicants. 50 in the last couple of years, right? I believe last year we had over 60 on yeah. there. Yeah, we did. We oh. needed extra people. The one thing I might have a problem with, whereas the hours have gone down to 62.5, um, might have to change the beach hours, like from nine to three. You know, if that's okay with the board, I, I might have to work. You know, some things in. You know, and hopefully uh, some of the requirements will go down. Um, you know, we get we get through town meeting. Um, and the you know now I know a lot of hours are spent on the pier, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we if we manage to get through town meeting and you have the kiosk out there, uh, maybe some training people there. But I don't think your requirements on the the pier will be. I didn't see anybody hanging around those kiosks uh, when I was in New Orleans. Yeah, and uh, they're pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. People know what they are. And we they can't know how do to the use pier. Them. We can it's not, put them on the beach. It's not that they're not going to use them because they haven't been trained. So I think that a lot of those hours will come back. So I think yes, you'll be I, fine. I believe so. Yeah. Okay. Um, just one. Okay. I'm good. Just, just like. Very quickly, on the lottery, uh, do you intend to lay it out that as the, as the ball comes up with a number for the person that they pick the job they want? Or are you going to have, like, the job will be listed, whoever comes up, that's their job? Just putting it out there ahead of time because you have to yeah. figure that one out. That that's going to be a good, good thought process on there because I was trying to think was when we get the applications in, we might want to have them list their their three top locations and maybe start whittled, whittling down like that. Uh, okay. But I appreciate the suggestion. Thank you, uh, Peter. Anything? No. This is Winslow. No, nope, that was my only question. No, would you? Uh, oh, do we need to vote on this? Motion, yeah. Okay. To approve. I move to approve. Excuse me, just one minute. Oh, the I'm sorry. The responsibilities that my recommendations that I did. Did anybody review them? Are we setting a limit as to your income, or is this going to be dealt with later? I thought I saw that in the on the application. This is um, this is the same things that we talked about last week, right? You didn't change. I just brought. I presented my recommendations. I, we didn't discuss anything. That's why I was wondering. But the, you are going to need to change the hours and Correct. that number. But I, I, could, I thought that we had a consensus, correct me if I'm wrong, that we agreed that there should be an income limit. Did we not? Well, you never voted. or uh, I just brought the recommendations to you, so... Should this be brought up later, or do you just want to prove the no, money Mr. and the hours? Or Mr. Sullivan uh, can deal with that um, as he's as he's updating these numbers. Yeah. I think we, excuse me, I think we can work together on that. What we'd be looking for from the board is the twenty-five thousand dollar amount, correct. and then we will fix the, <laughs> the other parts on and that. All that. And yep. I appreciate all your help on doing right. that Thank as well. You. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, sorry. Okay. I move to approve $25,000 for the senior work off program for the summer of 2013. Second. Motion made and seconded. Another question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 400. Zero, zero. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. And now you have a and now you have a structure to work with. So that should make you smile. Oh, Mr. Barrels, I'm sorry. We just, yeah, we just approved it. Yeah, they're, they're not currently available. Once they're available, we'll let everybody know where they are. They will be available, I would say, in the, the Board of Selectmen office, probably Council on Aging, and we'll try and do it in several places. Also online, we'll have it 
And as soon as they're up, I'll let uh, we'll I'll do an announcement on there. Yeah, I would expect what it'd be up no more than two weeks, right? Because you got to get them in and get people working. Yep. Next couple of weeks, cool. they should be done. Let's try and meet this week. <laughs> thank okay. you. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, WCTV, for your indulgence. We have the uh, discussion regarding the cable contract with WCTV. Oh, did you leave poor Tom sitting there by himself? <laughs> oh, uh, Peter. Peter's also here. <laughs> yeah, come on up. Yeah, come on up. Come you on guys, up. grab a seat. Come on up. Hey. Listen, you're part of the team. Come on up. It's all right. Just grab a seat. Yeah, don't leave him sitting there by himself. I mean, that's pretty awful. <laughs> just if you have something to say, just make sure you have a microphone. In. Would you all introduce yourself for the... Uh, uh, yes, good evening, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. My name is Margaret Ishihara. I'm the attorney for Wareham Community Television. Oh, good evening. I'm John White. I'm the president of the Board of Directors for Wareham Community Television. I'm Jay Hurd, executive director, WCTV. Uh, Peter Barrows. I'm the treasurer. Tom Worthen. Tom is a board member. <laughs> Doesn't talk I was going to say, he's the only one without a title. <laughs> right. I think you might have got dragged into this thing you without a title. <laughs> well, uh, you know, as most people know, this has been going on for years and years. Um, so hopefully, um, you know, we, we looked at the original that you sent us a couple months ago. We met with Mr. Bowen made some changes and suggestions, sent it back. And so tonight we're here to hopefully uh, go through that and um, clear up any differences and hopefully put this uh, to bed. So with that, um, I would say in terms of process, um, I would ask you to go first and raise any concerns or issues that you have with the contract that we sent back to you. All right. Um, Is that okay? That, that that's sense? fine. I guess we, we've gone back and forth okay? qu quite a bit, so I'm not sure at this juncture what the board has in front of it. Um, our board had met uh, maybe 10 days or so ago, and what we, um, the current iteration of this contract is this, that there's a um, document um, and my draft is dated March 15th, draft for town review. That's what I have. Okay, good. Does everybody have March 15th in front of them? Anybody have anything different? Okay, good. You All want right. to just walk through this? Would that be better, Mrs. Ishishara? That That's fine. Um, one other okay. piece on this, the I think of this as like the going forward agreement. Um, there have There's some issues in terms of um, uh, payments um, that's covered by a separate payment agreement, by uh, by a side agreement, if you will. I don't know if you have that with you. It's uh, it says payment agreement by and between the town of Wareham and Wareham Community Television, and unfortunately, I didn't put a date on the top of that. I have a, a document that says um, town of Wareham cable TV funds, Comcast, Verizon, with a whole list of numbers on it. Uh, probably not. <coughs> Maybe it's got a few extras. Yeah. <coughs> two of the staples. Okay, all right. Maybe I have it. We broke this out, and everybody understands that the two pieces. One is the, the contract right. itself. The other one is the payment right. piece. All right, so why don't we, you want to go through the contract first? Why don't I go through the contract first? Yeah. Um, uh, it's, only, it's, only, it's only a few pages, so. Which is only a few pages? Basically, basically what it says is, is that, you know, this is agreement one. between the town of Wareham. He's got the wrong one. March 15th, 2013. I just asked everybody if they had the same document I have. It says March 15, 2013, That's correct. draft for town review. That's at the correct. very top in the header. 
Everybody on the same page? Basically, it says that this agreement is made uh, by and between the town of Wareham, Massachusetts, through the Board of Selectmen and Wareham Community Television. I'm going to leave all that other stuff out. Basically, the town granted a cable television renewal license dated April 1, 2005 to Comcast for a 10-year term uh, from April 1st, 2005 through March 31st, 2015. And as now, remember, there's a separate sa cable committee that's working on those agreements. Um, the town granted uh, April 17, 2007 to Verizon. That contract runs through uh, December 20th, 2017. Comcast license and Verizon license provide to the town and residents certain public education and governmental channel uh, channels, also known as PEG. Um, Comcast is, uh, Verizon is 28, 29, and 30. Comcast is 95, 6, and 7. Is that right? Yeah, they think you think so. I mean, come on, you guys should know more about that than me. So I'm just trying to trying to weave this in so that we have a story behind it. Um, WCTV has provided that pig access um, since pretty much the inception of the agreement. And it says that the town will enter into this agreement pursuant to and consistent with the authority as a municipal corporation. Um, and basically uh, stating that under the federal and state law and all the provisions of the Comcast and Verizon licenses. Um, in consideration of the mutual promises uh, set forth in this agreement, here's what we agree to. One, the purpose of this agreement is, to pro is for the provision of PEG access, which I just went through what that was, programming, services, facilities, and equipment pursuant to the terms in this agreement um, on the Comcast and Verizon licenses and applicable law. To the term of the agreement <coughs> shall be from the date referenced above until the expiration of the existing Comcast and Verizon licenses. So in Comcast's case, it's uh, 2015, and in Verizon's case, it's 2017. Um, the, the town agrees to consult with WCTV should the town enter into negotiations for a license with any cable provider other than Comcast or Verizon. Or should the town enter into negotiations for the renewal of Comcast in Verizon licenses, which is what that other group is beginning to look at. Uh, basically, Section 3 says that the <coughs> WCTV shall provide public educational and government access, PEG. All access programming shall be require a Wareham sponsor, services, facilities, and equipment to the town of Wareham and access users, which shall be herein defined as Wareham residents and or persons associated with a Wareham business or organization. And that's consistent with the funds provided to WCTV pursuant to this agreement and the reasonable availability of access personnel, contractors, and volunteers in accordance with applicable law and Section 501c3, ta tax exempt organization. And just, I'll stop there for a second just so folks know that is what you are, correct? That is correct. Yep. So you are a 501c3 organization. The services, facilities, and equipment provided by WCTV shall be provided to access users on a first-come, first-served basis, non-discriminatory, etc. 3A says that schedule, op uh, schedule, operate, and maintain the PEG access channels provided in accordance uh, with the respectable cable licenses. WCTV shall coordinate and cooperate with the Wareham Public Schools in respect uh, to operation of the educational access channel. If anybody has any questions along the way, just raise your hand, okay? Uh, 3B says that all programming on the PEG access channels shall comply with ap applicable laws and regulations. When there is a dedicated educational access channel and or a dedicated government access channel, such channels shall not be used for public access programming or programming unrelated to educational or government 
access, and we, I think we covered that, then we have a separate channel for each one, correct? Uh, 3C says responsibly uh, manage the annual funding provided to and raised by WCTV, including the funding uh, provided pursuant to the existing licensing with, cable, with uh, Comcast and Verizon. D uh, will operate and maintain a public access studio and purchase annual lease equipment with the funds provided and raised by WCTV, in pers uh, including the funding provided uh, section seven, which is below. Conduct outreach and recruitment efforts and activities to increase membership and access users. Conduct training programs and the skills necessary to produce quality PEG access programming. Produce technical assistance to access users. Use an access corporation staff and volunteers. Provide access to production and post-production equipment for access users to the extent consistent with, the, with this agreement. And the Comcast and Verizon licenses establish rules, procedures, and guidelines for the use of PEG access channels, facilities, and equipment. And those uh, and equipment including written policies and procedures, documentation knowledge, which shall be acquired for all u required for all access users. Cablecast, all public meetings of the Wareham Board of Selectmen, the Wareham School Committee, and Wareham Town Meetings, unless otherwise requested by the respective government body, are unable to do so due to circumstances beyond reasonable control of WCTV or by mutual agreement with the respective government body. In such other town of Wareham meetings as requested upon reasonable notice by the respective government body in the Board of Selectmen consistent with funding provided WCTV pursuant to this agreement and the reasonable availability of access personnel contractors and no volunteers. Reasonable notice, which does not have to be written notice, shall be deemed to be 10 business days. If the requested coverage of a government meeting is less than 10 business days, WCTV shall reasonably attempt to comply with such a request, working out any equipment and staffing, scheduling to the best of its ability. WCTV shall comply with all lawful rules and reasonable requirements of the prospective government body with respect to a camera and sound coverage of a meeting. Nothing contained in this subsection is intended to interfere with the rights of any person to videotape a government meeting um, pursuant to the open meeting law. Jeez, I thought for sure there'd be a comment there. No. I'll only say that um, I understand the 10 business days. Of my, my thought when I was reading this was, you know that we've, certainly done this on three days notice in the past days. or less um, <laughs> sometimes things happen right um, and I will say that um, they've always been there um, I can't think of any meeting where we didn't on short notice that we didn't comply and you guys showed up to do the meeting um, I will stop there though and ask a question because where does the um, where does the feed, you know, the computer feed, where does that fit in this? It says that we're going we're gonna to broadcast on WCTV. But does that include the, does a cable cast include the so computer the feed? streaming, you mean? Right. Um, it's never been in the contract. <laughs> in fact, I think when the contract um, was originated, streaming probably wasn't even an issue, so right. it probably wasn't even a term or a, no one knew anything about it. Yeah, because I get a lot of, you know, we now have we a lot of people, especially this time of year, well, the last few months, right, in the winter that are in Florida or they're out in Arizona or they're somewhere warm and they like to watch the meetings. We, right? haven't, changed, we haven't changed the policy. I don't think there's any intention to change it. Um, it might be something to, to consider in the next <clears throat> contract. Well, I was if thinking like, maybe we could add it, add it to this section. I had a note to add it. 
the computer streaming, the live streaming, whatever you call well, it. it. It's streaming. It's yeah. I didn't know if that was part of what Cablecast meant. Comcast contract. That's why it's not. It's a, it's a competitive. Yeah, the, the, the issue with that, uh, res um, respectfully, Mr. Holmes, is that um, Comcast and Verizon make their money off of people that are watching things on their, on TV through their services. Um, and they might have an issue with streaming online being, in some sense, a competitor to that. That would be the only question mark that I have about that one. I don't, I don't know the answer. And I wouldn't want to at this, I think we're very close on this contract. I wouldn't want to, at this juncture to be putting something in that might just create a huge question mark and sort of throw us. Well, I mean, you do it now, right? It's not a we secret. We do it now. It's and done now. Yeah. A, yeah. It's and not a no secret. In, there's yeah. no intention to, there's no, there is no secret, but it's not a contractual uh, arrangement. And we've got almost half the board here. I don't think there's any intention to change it in, in the near Question. future. When we were working on this back and forth between council and myself, because the board had asked me to work on this for a while ago, uh, I left that out on purpose because there is an issue, and I really didn't want to make bring it out to the point where you'd have to sit there and bang heads with Comcast and Verizon on the streaming issue, because mm -hmm. there was paperwork back and forth. They were questioning the TV station at that time actually doing live streaming, whether or not they had the right to do it or not. So right. I think that's something we need to negotiate with Peter and with our contracts for Comcast and Verizon that they're working on now. So that way the, our cable provider, you know, as far as our local TV can do that without a problem. Because right now it's, it, it is iffy and I was, I just didn't feel comfortable putting it back in there. All right, uh, Peter? Yeah, I, I think we can uh, accept the uh, <clears throat> statements we've heard tonight from Mr. Hurd uh, regarding the streaming and uh, the fact that he's uh, saying there doesn't appear to be any change impending in the policy and, and just go with that. And again, uh, this can be something uh, brought up with the cable providers themselves by way of contract. I, I don't really necessarily buy that it's a major concern that people are poaching uh, this off the internet and not watching any other television. That doesn't really seem to be a, a sensible you know. thing to me. So I yeah, think we can work at that out with them. Yeah, and you know, and I, and as I, you know, I'm thinking about it, right? And, and these folks, wherever they are, I mean, everybody has cable in their house for the most part, right? Um, and they're paying Comcast or they're paying Verizon wherever they are, in New Bedford or Plymouth or Florida or in their condo somewhere, right? They're paying one of those two companies for, for the most, most part. Um, so they're already a subscriber. And then when they come back, I mean, they subscribe, they transfer it here. So I, there might be a few poachers who would use the computer, right? But for the most part, I think most of those people are subscribers. Uh, you know, I'm good with it as long as we have a, because you remember it when uh, there was some suggestion that it wasn't going to take place. We had a bit of an uproar there, and I don't want that to happen uh, again. Mrs. Winslow, did you have a comment on this or no? I, I think this is, moving. yeah, I think this is great. Let's, you know, I'd like to see this get accomplished and no longer be hanging over our heads. Okay. Okay, so anything else on that question? Uh, moving right along, we're down to K. WCTV shall, upon a timely request of the Board of Selectmen or Town Administrator, provide at no cost to the town one DVD or appropriate media uh, copy of a government meeting previously cablecast by WCTV. Uh, L, assist the... William Public Schools, if requested by the school committee and the Board of Selectmen with educational access programming, including uh, providing technical assistance, it is not the intent in this agreement that WCTV shall directly or indirectly provide for a fund, uh, for or fund, a media director, teacher, or other related personnel. Accomplish such other tasks relating to the operation, scheduling, or management of PEG access channels, facilities and equipment as necessary or appropriate. With respect to dues for members of the WCT of WCTV, there shall be a provision for the waiver of dues due to reasons of hardship. Fees shall be reduced or eliminated for students of the Wayham Public Schools or for a Wayham resident attending any other school up through high school. Uh, oh, 
Should the Board of Selectmen dispute any action of WCTV concerning the cable casting of public meetings <laughs> under 3J that uh, above that is not otherwise determined by this agreement or the Verizon or Comcast licenses, the Board shall notice, notice, uh, notify a WCTV of a, the complaint in writing. The party shall meet in an effort to resolve the disagreement. In the event that the disagreement is not resolved, the party shall jointly select a neutral third party whose determination shall be binding <coughs> in the matter. The board and WCTV shall bear the expenses, if any, of a said neutral equally, and in no event shall the total expenses paid by WCTV exceed $500. This provision in no way permits the Board of Selectmen to exercise any control over the content of programming. <coughs> That's underlined, and I'm sure there's some questions there. That seems awful loaded to me. That actually uh, was a because there was questions on the, basically on the WCTV, the board having control over what they put out there which has a freedom issue and stuff and we came up with a compromise on the language and the do dollar amount and I actually I think we put together the arbitration of how it would, would solve any issues that came up and it seemed to be the, the agreeable way to do it and everybody was happy at that point. What if, what if the arbitration cost is $1,000? Well, it's $500 per party. Per party. I understood. What about if it's $2,000? They pay five, the town pays 15, is that what you're saying? Could happen. Normally on this type of arbitration, well, it should acceptable. be pretty simple. I don't know that that's <coughs> acceptable. Well, it actually says- I mean, We would never sign it. I would never sign an agreement like that, that piece during the day. I don't know why I'd do it at night. Well, it actually says that, um, <laughs> that the, the expenses shall be borne equally. So I right. suppose the-, the So um, if it's, fi it's $1,500, let's say, uh, hopefully it will never happen, right? That's the goal. But if it was $1,500 for the arbitration, if something did develop, it says here that total expense paid by WCTV exceed 500, no event shall that expense paid by WCTV exceed $500. If we're, if we're splitting that cost 50-50 for arbitration and the bill is $1,500, are you saying that you would only pay up to five and the town would be on the hook well, for a no, thousand? Well, no. Actually, what this says is that you're no one's ever going to pay more than a thousand dollars. That's basically what it says. So, the board and WCTV shall bear the expenses of any of said neutral equally, and in no event shall the total expense paid by WCTV exceed five hundred dollars. I suppose I could have put in there, but it's a little redundant. Nor shall the town pay more than five hundred dollars. Mr. Chair. I'm sorry? It's limiting the arbitration. It's basically limiting any, anyone who we hire as an arbitrator to a thousand dollar fee as correct. a max. That's correct. That's another way of putting it. That's another way of putting it. But we would not be looking. I would, I would like to see that cleaned up a little bit. Just, you know, if you just put an added in there, if we both agree to it, to say that uh, total cost of arbitration will not exceed one thousand dollars. That's fine. Okay. That way, that way, there's a cap on it, Mrs. Ishishara, so that in the event that something does come up and we're at fifteen hundred bucks, then you can always go back and say that. But our expense side of that equally will never exceed, and that's what it says. In no event shall it exceed five hundred dollars. That's fine. Okay. That's fine. Yes. That was the intent. Where Where are we getting an arbitrator for a thousand dollars? Well, hopefully we'll never need one, but well, I'm assuming that... Uh, the intent. Uh, right, but, but what I'm saying is that let's be realistic here. If we... Mr. Barrows will do it for $1,000. You'll do it for 1000 he do it for seven fifty. But seriously, if we needed seriously. an arbitrator and we went to the American Arbitration Association... No, I'm trying to avoid, oh, no, the, I'm no, trying no. To avoid that by a putting party, the language in this says... Because I, I hear what you're saying, the American, because I've dealt with the American Arbitration Association, and they'll charge you thousand dollars to show up for three hours. All right, right. Um, but it says neutral third party, and see the issues that should come up under, oh, hopefully are f they're not labor like you see in your labor cases. 
they're going to be fairly narrow in scope. They're going to be issues of whether WCTV covered some meeting when they were, didn't cover some meeting when you say, you know, we were supposed to. Um, or whether we got reasonable notice of something. Right. Um, it, it seems from the earlier comments that Mr. Holmes made that I, my experience has been just kind of hanging around the station, that WCTV is very good at getting the call on Friday for a workshop meeting on Saturday and saying, we, and we pull it off. To scramble right. around to find some of it, we'll pull it off. So, you know, I'm, not saying, that, I'm yeah. not saying that it would fall apart. All I'm saying is, is once we sign this document, it means something. And I'd just like to have that cleared up. That, that's fine. A third party yeah. doesn't have to be, no. to me, a third party, and I was joking, but it could be Mr. Barros, sure, sure. Um, who could sit and listen to your argument, my argument, and, and come to a reasonable decision as a, a person who ha doesn't have an interest. Right. Well, Maybe we wouldn't have somebody from Wayham, I don't know, but it doesn't have to be some special legal beagle because it's not a legal... It wouldn't be a legal question. It will be a complaint that you didn't do something that you said you were going to do. Right, the other correct. piece to this is if we ever found ourselves in a situation where we needed a more arbitration than $1,000 would buy us, the parties could certainly agree to amend the contract uh, to provide for more pricey arbitrator. I don't know if that would be too right, popular with the taxpayers or, or your users, but it well, could right, happen. So. Right, yeah. that's the other that's And let's just thing. remember that the subject of O is the cable casting of meetings. That's what it deals with. So that's what I'm saying. Maybe Mr. Barrows couldn't do it because he might have wanted to watch that meeting that you didn't telecast and you wouldn't want him arbitrating. <laughs> but I don't think we have to go to some national arbitrators. I just wanted to make sure that that, that was covered. So if, if Rich, if you and Mrs. Zishashara could put some a comment there, we can get through that easy now. Okay, section four provides for equal, uh, open and equal access this uh, covers uh, access users. So WCTV agrees to keep the public access channel open to all potential access users regardless of their viewpoint, subject to the FCC regulations and applicable laws. Neither the town of Wayham or any, any other government entity nor WCTV shall have the authority to control the content of programming placed on the public access channel so long as the programming is lawful. WCTV shall develop and enforce policies and procedures which are designed to promote local use of the channel and make programming accessible to residents consistent with such time and manner and place regulations including safe harbor provisions as are appropriate uh, to provide for and promote the use of PEG access channels, equipment, facilities. Section five, non-commercial programming. All access programming cable cast by WCTV shall be non-commercial as per the existing Comcast and Verizon licenses. Noting uh, nothing in the agreement shall prohibit WCTV from including an appropriate underwritten acknowledgement before or after a PEG program to the extent otherwise not prohibited by applicable law and or the terms of the cable license. C, WCTV may charge a reasonable fee for the following services. Services customarily provided to access users by a PEG access corporation for a fee and services customarily provided to third parties for a fee, including tape dubbing, uh, the provisions of videotapes, DVDs of particular access programs to the extent not prohibited by law. Copyright clearance. WCTV shall itself obtain or require the respective access user to obtain all rights to all materials cable cast and clearances from broadcast stations, networks, sponsors, etc. I don't think I need to read all that. I think people understand what that is. Uh, section 7. Payments. Comcast license. The town shall for any PEG access funding payment due to the town under the Comcast license paid to WCTV the PEG access funding in the amount of 4% of Comcast's gross annual revenues. See Comcast license six, section 6.5 <laughs> annual support for public access within 30 days of receipt of the payment from Comcast 
along with any copies of correspondence received by the town from Comcast with the payment. The parties understand that the Comcast license provides for a total payment of 4.5% of its revenues, four of which goes to WCTV and a half a percent which is retained by the town. Any issues there? But the Verizon license, the, the town shall, uh, beginning with the PEG access funding payment due to the town of the Verizon license, pay WCTV, the PEG access operating support of 4% of Verizon's gross annual revenues, and that's contained in section 5.4 of the PEG access Verizon uh, support license within 30 days of receipt of the PEG access payment from Verizon, and along with any copies and correspondence that come with the payment. The parties understand that the Verizon license provides for a total of 4.5% of its revenues, 4% uh, which goes to WCTV, and 05 which is retained by the town. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, any issue with that 30 days of your receipt? Getting the check uh, to WCTV? No? Anybody have any questions on these sections? Usually there's a lot of talk about the money, right? No. Not today. Uh, just, just one. Oh, there uh, I see. I knew I stopped for a reason. Yeah, uh, and this, this would go to Attorney Bowen. Uh, as I understand it, there's actually a range by which the town can negotiate payments from the cable providers with the renewal of each contract. And I guess the concern I have with stating it here uh, is uh, are the contract terms here consistent with the expiration of the others? I just wanted to clarify that and make sure that you've looked at that and agree. Uh, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, that was something that we looked at very closely to make yeah. sure that it lined up properly. Good, because I, I, I hate to uh, execute a contract here that says we're giving you 4% uh, of their gross and then have our deal with them and sooner we negotiate a worse deal and all of a sudden we're getting nothing and you're getting all of it. So <laughs> we'd have a hard time explaining that one to the taxpayers. Um, yeah, I don't want to switch uh, subjects, although this is very important. In the discussions uh, with the other group, are we looking at some point to co-terminate these on the same date? Right now we're, what, two years apart? Uh, are we looking to, to bring them like with the next agreement? Uh, I don't know that we can do yeah, well, that. Well, because we there's a lot of this language that in this contract that talks about two different other contracts. I'm just trying to see if we get them both on, to expire. I, I don't know that day. we can because typically when you, when you execute these agreements there for 10 years at a time, I think the state law mandates that. So where you had a, a provider come in you yeah. know, eight years into the other one's contract, I, I don't know how you can ever get those aligned. So. Well, usually we try to we try to get those the same because if uh, if in 2015 you change well to your point in 2015 if you change the Comcast rate in that agreement with Comcast um, to four percent let's say uh, then you're losing a half a percent for two years because this contract uh, ends at the end of those agreements right. So what you just said, you covered, you, you're biting it for two years. Yes. If it works the other way, it's in our favor, and that's okay with Mr. Sullivan. But um, I think the, the spirit of this is to have this agreement terminate with the other two, right? This follows along the other two, especially where the money part is. Yes, so I don't know if there's a way to do that. Maybe no. you guys could bring it up during your session to try to do that. So all three would, would then end at the same time, okay. right? No. If it's possible. If it's possible. I mean, you're either telling one company they're going to have an eight-year good, good luck. But it's only once. You only do it for the next. You only do it for the next <laughs> renewal, and then they all, just, they all end on the it would, same. If, if, well, anyway, just if it's possible 12. to do that, it just makes it right. good Make for someone the 12 and make the, well. Yeah. Anyway. Right. The, the only Whatever. issue is if you make one of them eight, they're, they're going to be screaming that they're paying their lawyer for all that work to get right. four-fifths of the, the term. So they're not going to be thrilled See? about that. But. It always goes back to the lawyers. Uh, if request. May I ask a question? Sure. Thank you. Is there a reason why, because these are actually cable licenses. They're not just contracts with the cable companies. We're issuing a license. And I'm fairly certain that it's a 10-year license, and they pay for it. So 
I'm not sure we're going to be able to get anybody to budge on that. But isn't there is is there a possibility of having a two year agreement between those two contract dates with WCTV to ensure that the numbers are accurate? Because they're the ones that would be the most flexible in that regard. I. Well, I don't no, know. Because I think at this no. point, if we just ask Peter to try to work through that with his group, right? And you have people on that board as well. Um, I'm just thinking that down the road, it just makes it so much easier. If you have the three, they come up October 1st every year. You renew the three and you're done. You keep moving on. Because there is a chance that when, um, who's the first one again? Comcast. Comcast. When Comcast. Comcast renews, if those numbers change in that agreement, uh, if they go up, even if, let's say they negotiate well, and those numbers go up, the town w you would get four percent of that. No, no, the no, town no. The, keep the the, uh, no. There's no. a there's a. Um, I I agree with you. It would be cleaner if everything had right. the same exact term. I don't know. Um, I don't know if Comcast, and Verizon are going to go along with that, but um, in terms of this particular contract. Um, our payments um, run for the same length of time that the Comcast license and the Verizon license run respectively. Yeah, this That's what I'm trying to yeah. say. Yeah, That's but what happens here is that right. when we get to 2015, we will have already started to negotiate at least six months beforehand with WCTV and with Comcast to know what's there because we have to have a new contract with WCTV that's for Comcast starting correct. that end that's date correct. of 2015. Right, that's correct. Because this contract has got two end dates in it. Effectively, that's correct. Even right. though it's one that's contract, right. we, right. Have, we have okay. two entities. So, right. so this, is, no. this is a dual burner. Yes. But that's, but that's what I'm trying to say. Is there a way to clarify that? that? Because then when the Verizon contract comes up, I mean, if we get a better deal, you guys don't want to lose out, I'm sure. You don't want to be bound to... Well, we're not. It's in the contract also talking about changing rates down the line. Right. All right, let's keep going because maybe, maybe there is something in there. It's just much cleaner if they're all on the same day. Well, probably the way uh, to do that would be two separate contracts, but, but two, actually okay. two separate contracts, uh, period. We just went through all the payments. Verizon license. Okay, we're down to, there's the 4%, 30 days. Mr. Sullivan is fine with that. Uh, has Frederick agreed that WCTV, we're on uh, D, the bottom of page 5. Frederick agreed that WCTV shall be responsible for providing and installing peg access equipment, including cameras, cable casting equipment at the Wareham Town Hall, in other municipal or school buildings as dedicated by the Board of Selectmen. The Board of Selectmen shall provide... WCTV with an adequate advance notice of said equipment needs, and WCTV shall consult with the Board of Selectmen or its designee about the equipment uh, to secure its obligation in the event of disillusion or termination of this agreement. WCTV hereby grants the town a security interest in all equipment provided or purchased pursuant hereto. WCTV agrees to take all steps reasonably requested by the town to perfect and enforce the town's security interests, including the execution and processing of financial statements and continuation statements under the Uniform <coughs> Commercial Code. WCTV shall provide the town with copies of all such filings. There you have it. That's it. You, you didn't have one comment. No comments. <laughs> no. I could probably read this in my sleep. <laughs> I'm sure you could. Um, questions? You want to go around the start? Was it John? Peter? Oh, Peter. Peter? Uh, I'm sorry. We've uh, been through this contract many times. We, I was under the impression we were here for a final approval. I thought we were all in, all in agreement. Well, that's what we're doing. We just discussed it. That is what it. we're doing, Peter. All right. I wanted to go through it. Uh, one agreement. more time, so that we're all at the same table, sir. And I'm in agreement. It takes it took an extra 15 minutes, but that's okay. Tom, comments? No comments. No questions. Jay? No, no questions. Jay. No questions. I, I do want to thank uh, I do want to thank Mr. Mr. Slavin uh, for his help on this 
putting this together, Mr. Bowen, uh, and the board. Appreciate it. Peter? I was just wondering if uh, this, this question is uh, directed towards Attorney Ishihara. Is there going to be any additional boilerplate here, severability, all that kind of stuff, or are we just going to stop it at the end? Well, um, ac actually, I um, you stopped on page six. You have There's actually 15 pages to this. That's all we got. That's all we have. We've got six. Oh. You, hide, you, hide, you hid the last section on us. I got six. Oh, Mr. Bowen. Uh, okay. I got well, thank you for pointing that out. Gosh. Look at you guys are cutting off. What's in these last <laughs> yeah, nine pages? Yeah, we're happy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My copy was cut off. Let's see, if you're tired of it. Oh, my sticker. No. If you're tired of reading, maybe you can hand it off to the one of no, us. No, I think, I think we'll just run right through this real quick. Um, <clears throat> which one? Uh, right here. In, because a lot of this stuff here is really pretty simple. Basically, it says that in the event WCTV makes a decision to move the station, WCTV will notify the town in writing at least 120 days in advance. Um, governance, the board of directors shall have a minimum of seven, board, seven directors who shall be by, uh, elected um, by its own group in accordance with your own bylaws. Not to change because I think up until now we have kind of, you've elected them and we've done that every year to, because in the old document it said the boards of selectmen would do that. Are there any issues in section nine? Because most of this is governed by the bylaws and uh, in conjunction with their 501 3C status. At least once a year, WCTV uh, sh shall submit a town to the town an annual report, which talks about its accomplishments during the year, with some specifics in terms of finances, etc. cetera. Um, meeting between the town and the WCTV each year, if requested by the Board of Selectmen or its designee, WCTV shall meet with the Board of, the Lo Board of Selectmen purpose of the said meeting shall be to uh, review WCTV's compliance, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and that's pretty, pretty simple. No more than four times during the term of the agreement, uh, WCTV, if requested by the town through the Board of Selectmen, be required to engage or retain a person or entity which is not knowledgeable and experienced in access operations Commonwealth to conduct a performance review of WCTV's operations at the and at WCTV's expense, notwithstanding to not be obligated to pay more than $2,000 for each such performance review. Wow. You're okay with that? Good thing I'm not sitting. That's 8,000 bucks. Um, section 13, records and audit. Obviously, uh, they have to follow the rules and regulations of a 5013C outfit upon request from the town. WCTV shall, at a reasonable time during normal business hours, make available any, any in all of its records with respect to all matters covered by this agreement at no cost to the tow. I think, I think we want that to say town. Thank you. Um, uh, the town shall, at its cost, have the right to have financial books and records of WCTV access reviewed by a qualified individual or firm. All capital equipment obtained by WCTV will be inventoried and permanently marked in inventory, including invoice numbers, maintained and updated. Right? Neither this agreement or any other interest or personal, uh, res uh, any other interest or responsibility shall be assigned or transferred by WCTV except as expressly authorized in writing by the town through the board. Nothing is in this agreement prohibits you, WCTV, from obtaining outside funds as long as it, they're gained in a lawful manner. Um, WCTV shall uh, unless it's agreed otherwise by the parties, uh, have and maintain and force in effect all times uh, during this agreement insurance 
for liability, motor vehicle liability, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. The town shall be named as an additional insured on all aforementioned insurance coverages. Uh, such insurance shall be primarily and shall not call on the town's insurance or contributions. The cost of the insurance shall be borne by WCTV. Directors and officers liability insurance, et cetera, et cetera. This is all pretty standard stuff. Uh, miscellaneous provisions. This uh, instrument contains the entire agreement between the parties, which supersedes all prior agreements or proposals except as specifically incorporated herein. Um, blah, blah. And then basically it says, uh, official notice shall be in writing and delivered and sent by certified mail, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there's a couple of signet pages in there. And wow. <coughs> Whose copy is this? Who just gave me this? Oh. You got something stapled there. Yeah, you we don't want, want to, to read out loud. Read that out loud. <laughs> 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 okay, so. See how quick that, see how easy it is to go through the last nine pages? Yeah, I think go. it's pretty well covered. Anybody else? Questions? Comments? Mr. Bowen, <clears throat> you worked on it? Yes, Where's your feeling? <clears throat> well, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, we have two agreements. I think uh, with the edits that we discussed, which I've already recorded, and we'll email to everyone in just one moment, uh, this one is set. Okay. Mrs. Ishishara, comments? Are you comfortable? Yes, that's fine. There were a okay. couple of typos that we need I to correct. I can have a motion by the board. Uh, Mr. Chair, you only wanted that one clarification, right? In that one section? The, uh, Would you like me to read back the edits? The piece. Yeah, if you want to do that so that the public's aware that you made that change as well. Uh, here's the email. Gentle persons, these are my notes on the proposed edits. Rich, page four, subsection O, edit. The board and WCTV shall bear the expenses of the neutral equally with the total cost paid by the parties not to exceed $1,000 in total. Page 9, subsection B, edit. Upon request from the town, WCTV shall at reasonable times during normal business hours make available any or all of its records with respect to all matters covered by this agreement at no cost to the town. Ah. And did you get the edit on page 4? It is not intent. It is not the intent of this agreement. Anything else? It's right at the top in the. So the motion would be made to accept the agreement with the edits by Mr. Bowen. Any objections to those, Attorney Ishihara? I was just looking at the last thing that you said. I was just trying to find. It's the at the very top of the page. Of page four. Yeah, it's where it speaks about the media teacher. Uh, at least on mine, it's on page four. Oh. It is not the intent of this agreement. It says, on mine, it says, it is not intent. Yeah. It's section L. Okay. Oh, right, it's first, yeah, first. Yeah, I have it at the bottom of page three. Okay. Oh, okay. sorry. That's fine. <coughs> okay. Uh, just, just one more. Uh, I found a word repeated in here under section seven B. Uh, that's on my page five. Uh, the last sentence reads, the parties understand that the Verizon license provides, provides. I think we just need one provides. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Sometimes we forget that little thing called spell check. No, that wouldn't pick up. Spell check wouldn't pick that. It would. Oh. It should pick up a duplicate a, word. It's spelled no. correctly both times. Oh, mine picks up a duplicate <laughs> word. Well, you have a special spell check. Thank God, because my fingers, I type so fast sometimes I'm not paying attention. No, the newer programs pick up that duplicate yeah. words. Yeah. yeah. All right, so. You got you to gotta upgrade past, you know, Windows. <laughs> Was it even called Windows? <laughs> All right. Let's uh, wrap this. We have a motion made. Second. Uh, not yet. Oh, I thought we did. We just did. I didn't make a motion. Well, please do. Okay. I thought you did. Apologize. No. Ms. Attorney Bowen read the er edits and Attorney Ishihara agreed to them. I move to approve the cable contract with WCTV inclusive of the edits previously mentioned. Motion made. Second. On the question. All in favor. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed. Abstain. Four zero zero. Okay. Uh, part two. Part two. Um, on. I don't know if you ha have this, and I just have one. New Margaret, I only see. Uh, copy. What's that? I don't. I thought that 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 one side. needed. I don't believe, Margaret, that's gone out to the board. That was still yeah. a work in process between yeah, the three is, of us. It, yeah, it is still a work in and process. Matt Chair, as well. With, with your permission, uh, there's been discussion of what we've called a side agreement to uh, catch up on certain payment issues. Right. Uh, I think, and Margaret, correct me if, if you think I'm mischaracterizing, I think we're very close in having this one done. There is a remaining question as to a, was a Verizon uh, capital payment, and uh, we're investigating whether we were paid by Verizon and therefore uh, whether we've paid it on to WCTV or whether, in fact, Verizon may owe us a payment. Uh, it, other than that issue, I think it's it goes back to the beginning of time, right? Yeah, it's we had a meeting on this. Button down, I think. Other than that, it's, yeah. two years ago, I, I, if I recall. Issue. It's a it's a timing, timing issue, issue that, uh, that we've been working through. So. Yeah. Or so, so what's our, so what are we going to do? You're going to finish the document. What can I make a suggestion yeah. that um, we try and work out the this issue with this capital payment between. Um, um, Attorney Bowen and probably Matt Underhill and Mr. S Sullivan to see if we can at least okay. agree on the at least amongst that subgroup, if you will, on that number, and come back to the board okay. with that to present it. That's fine. Um, our intention would be WCTV's intention would be to um, have both of these approved by the board of selectmen and then we'll sign. I don't want to have because this has kind of led to an issue in the past: one agreement signing, the other kind of floating around. Out there on the well, we issue, approved but the we're first very, one, very so close. It's just a matter of <laughs> we're very, very yeah, close. I thought you yeah. were ready to, to yeah. do that. That's yeah. why I thought this table was here. Yeah. Uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah, what like what do we have? What's the timeline on this? Can we get this done in like two weeks? E we should e be able easily. to do this for the 9th of April meeting. Okay. Easily. Easily. Just as a point so people understand also, there was another issue on dollars which had to do with how much 4% of 4.5 is had to do with a rounding issue. So there was some money there also, which is one of the reasons we couldn't come and tie out audit-wise, which we've solved that issue as well. So yeah, let's get, it's let's one get payment the, only right we, now, we and that's it. If we get this all done by the night, that would be fantastic. And, and okay. finally, uh, get moving, because I know there are new things on the horizon, and we need to keep going forward here. We, um, we certainly, um, and I think the board would agree, we certainly appreciate everyone's efforts. We appreciate um, your efforts as well. Done. We do. Very much so. Good. Thank, good, you. Good, good, good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Margaret. Okay. Next up, we have uh, to the town council appointment. Okay. Uh, as you know, each May, March, Board of Selectmen appoints uh, town council. Um, we um, started this process, I guess, back in January, doing the job description, put out an RFP. Last week, we held the um, we held the interviews. There were three responses to the RFP, and so we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. That's that's the story. That's where we're at. You know, I'm going to start on my left, as I always do, and not change the rotation. And I will ask for comments from Mr. Teitelbaum. Uh, regarding the, the town council uh, applicants, uh, I'd like to again thank the three applicants for coming in and giving very comprehensive presentations. Uh, they each outlined their, their legal philosophies, uh, which I think was helpful uh, to, to my thinking. I'll wait for Madam Moderator to close the door there. Uh, I did run some numbers here. Uh, as we know, there were significant differences in the base price, uh, in particular between 
uh, Copeland and Page, which offered a base price of $96,000 for the year, and Attorney Bowen, who offered $180,000 for the year. And again, both uh, being exclusive of labor. Uh, so we understand that going in. The Copeland and Page uh, team told us that they did not contemplate office hours or routine attendance at Board of Selectmen's meetings. Uh, they did offer to perform such work at a discounted rate of $150 an hour. And based upon my review of the invoices we've seen from uh, Attorney Bowen about the amount of time that's required, uh, and taking into account the fact that they said they wouldn't charge for travel, uh, what I came up with was you would take their $96,000 base, you would add approximately $75,000 uh, to that to attend the office hours uh, basically every week of the year. And then on top of that, it would cost another $25,000 for them to be here. So I, I arrived at a figure of $196,000 and then I think there's probably another, I don't know, seven or $10,000 in ancillaries for phone usage and, and faxing and things like that. So the, the total contract price, just for the purpose of comparative analysis between the two applicants, uh, came out for K&P, I guesstimated that it would be about $206,000. Now, I could be 10000 bucks wrong either way here, so don't take that figure absolutely to the bank. Uh, but that's more or less what I came up with here. So. With that in mind, I should talk about Attorney Mayo. Uh, I think Attorney Mayo, uh, I, I liked his philosophy that he wants to be involved. I think he's earnest. I think in a few years, he is somebody who is going to have the experience and the full background uh, to be able to take on a town that has some fairly complex legal issues and a complex legal history to, to jump into and keep abreast of, uh, but for now, I don't know that he's the right solution for us. But again, I enjoyed his presentation. I think he uh, shows great promise in the future. So with that in mind, I'm inclined uh, to stick with what we have. I think Attorney Bowen has done a good job in, again, as I said last week, prophylactic lawyering, which is preventing bad things from happening. And I think that's a direct consequence of his knowing the people in town. I think that's extremely helpful. I think it's a consequence of his being here generally twice a week, talking to people, finding out what it is that we're looking to do, not telling us what to do, which is important. We don't need a lawyer telling us what to do. We need a lawyer telling us how we can get it done once we've decided what it is that we want to do. And I think he's done a very good job in that. And I think he's done a good job of, of keeping us out of the courtroom. I think he's done a good job of dealing with employment issues that certainly we can't talk about publicly, but that in the course of being a selectman you find out about. Uh, he's taken uh, actions in concert with administration uh, to stop things before they become a serious problem. And so my vote uh, would be to continue with Mr. Bowen at the uh, offered rate of $180,000 a year that we're currently off working under. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Slavin. Before I start, I'd like to thank uh, Selectman Winslow for making sure we got this up on the agenda so it wasn't a last minute rush, so we didn't have really time. Um, I look at uh, legal as a little different. When I used to hire people as far as lawyers or recommend to different clients, um, the cost is important, but the cost is not the primary. The primary piece for a lawyer is how they keep you on the reservation and don't allow you to go off the reservation, which always costs money, especially in business when you make bad decisions or do things on an impulse or what you think is right without knowing what is really right. Um, I've had a chance in the last four or five years to um, deal with Town Council Bowen on the opposite side, the times we disagreed, times we agreed, it was pretty much straightforward. I've watched him in the last year that I've been here, um, and he'll give me straight answers, and he won't basically let me go too far off, and he doesn't say, well, you can do this if you want to do it this way. He tells me the right way to do it. 
Uh, I appreciate that because it's too easy to make rash assumptions and go the wrong way. Um, and basically what a lawyer does is keep you, keeps your expenses in check and keeps you there. Going back in prior history, I don't think that happened before on a consistent basis, which is one of the reasons why I believe our legal costs went up. Uh, the idea of a law firm, uh, basically, if, you ha if something goes wrong, they'll take care of the case for you, is not a solution. The idea is never to get to that point. And in the last year, we've avoided having a lot of those issues, and we've solved quite a few. So at this point in time, even though the numbers seem wrong, and I'm sure people are going to be very upset that I'm spending more money than people think I should be because I'm always questioning the dollar value and always going for the right process, I believe in the long term this will be our best dollar that we're going to spend. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Winslow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the the KMP quote they said was capped, and it wouldn't go above the ninety six um, thousand. And I was confused by that, and I did uh, ask her uh, about that. I actually um, was really not. Um, I could find some good things and some bad things in each of the presentations. My concern right now uh, is that regardless of what philosophy the board has as it sits today, whether a firm or an independent or another, you know, some other options. What's that noise? I don't know. Me? I'm like electrified. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, the, the philosophy, you know, of a large firm, the philosophy of an independent, the, you know, all those things are, are great. And, um, but what I'm looking at is that everybody that sat before us is trained in the law. And, um, you know, I am concerned about the co our legal costs. I mean, considering, you know, our labor council where, you know, we're still looking at spending a quarter of a million dollars. And, um, and I have big concerns about that going forward. I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not going to agree with it. What I'm saying is that we've got to find a way to bring those costs down. I mean, when we're looking at cutting services, spending a quarter of a million dollars is an awful lot of money. And, you know, I think, I think it's a good thing that we have uh, an available attorney, but I think that that can be a bad thing too. I think there's good and bad in everything. Uh, but at the end of the day, the community is looking at us to spend their tax dollars as responsibly as we can. And while I'm pretty sure I know how this is going to go tonight, I, I think that the board uh, should look at other options that are available to them, such as in-house counsels um, and other things, you know, for the future, because um, it, it is hard to swallow that kind of bill, especially considering that our litigation has been, you know, significantly cut back from those big days of, you know, lots of lawsuits. And, and as I said, I mean, we could talk all night and debate the pros and cons of each philosophy and each quote and bid. That's, you know, not productive. Um, but I, I would like to see, I, I was disappointed that I didn't see more competitive pricing. I will say that, and I'll say it out loud and on TV, that I th I was hoping for some more competitive pricing, because uh, ultimately these are these are tax dollars that we're spending, and every dollar we spend on a legal service, we're not spending on a service that the community sees a benefit from. And I I definitely think that we can get this accomplished for less money. So, and I'm hoping we can work towards that for the future. That's it. Oh, that's it. Okay. Um, you know, I've looked at this many different ways. Um, I think, personally, I tried to uh, work numbers, what I thought was reasonable for an in-house counsel. And nobody has the expertise of every area of law, although Mr. Teitelbaum thinks he does. Um, and even... You know, with a in-house attorney, I'm thinking, I don't know what a lawyer makes, but I'm guessing, you know, about a buck ten or so. 
would probably be fine for a youngster. Um, and then when you add all those ancillary services that are required uh, with benefits and and other things, I mean, you're still up around. It still gets you close to 200 when I the way I did it. Um, you know, I look at at the the first firm. And it was 96, you know, those people charged us 400, 400 a couple of years in a row there, um, which is the three ring binder that I talked about when I got here. Um, and today, uh, without any detail, uh, we only have a couple of those. And it's no, it's not uh, a direct reflection. I think the Board of Selectmen I'd like to take a lot of credit for that, um, although behavior certainly has had something to do with that in a more civil atmosphere. But really, that's a credit to town council and the person who's running and trying to close those books and keep this board informed as to what's going on legally in the town. The other piece that nobody's mentioned here um, is, is part of this agreement that Mr. Bowen pitched f without an increase in price comes with John Witten. John is um, a very well-respected lawyer, especially in the areas of land and zoning issues. Um, I know for a fact, because I, I'm the liaison there, but I know for the fact that, that the, the zoning board really um, has put a lot of faith in John, Mr. Winton, and he has actually received revenue, brought revenue back to the town on several projects where he did auditing on uh, 40B things and some of the projects. So um, I've received um, some requests from citizens in terms of Mr. Winton as well. I don't know Barbara very well. So I can't really speak to her. I don't know if she helps Rich now. I, I didn't ask him that question. Um, but I was the one uh, who was familiar with counsel at these meetings. Um, you know, there's some philosophy about a fifth, sixth selectman, seventh selectman. That's just hogwash. Um, we've been able to move our agenda forward um, especially when Mr. Bowen is here and town council is here, because when we come to a question, Mr. Teitelbaum is a lawyer, but we're not allowed to take his advice because when he sits here, he's a member of the Board of Selectmen. And that would be unfair to take his advice and probably have an ethical issue somewhere along the line. So there have been many occasions when the board is trying to decide on policy and other issues where we refer to town council to give us a ruling. And that's why he keeps his computer here. He can check various applicable law and give us an answer. And then we don't, there's no delay, action is taken. The other feedback I got um, in looking at this is this um, uh, office hours that we were also kind of criticized from the other firm about having um, this gives our boards, commissions, department heads, Mr. Sullivan, I know it's valuable to him. I'm going to give him the opportunity to speak. Um, it's very valuable uh, assistance to know that every Thursday or every Friday or every Wednesday that someone is here. Uh, you don't have to do it by phone. Uh, we're right on the scene. If there's ca carryover, we have the entire day to figure it out. And I know that that's been extremely helpful uh, to our department heads and others in the board uh, to head off litigation that the other firms, if we didn't have that kind of counsel, we would end up in litigation and then those other firms, their fees would go up. So I think it's not always about, oh, you know, this one's more expensive than the other one. Yeah. That works for pads of paper, it works for supplies, it works for some other things. But when it comes to something as important as legal counsel, I think you get what you pay for. And I think that our past experience will show that. Um, you can pay cheap, 
but you know what? We're going to pay on the other end. And then if it goes through our insurance company, um, it gets hidden, so it's not part of the cost, and our insurance rates go up. So um, I strongly support, um, at this point in time, given all of the weight and all of the options, I support Mr. Bowen and Mr. Witten uh, to carry us through the next year. But I agree that at some point, um, it, there's no increase in fee here. It, actually, this is a reduction in fee uh, because there were there were funds expended through planning and zoning that we won't be spending um, because Mr. Witten is part of this this deal as well. So I think it's it's a, a dollar well spent. Um, but I think at some point, you know, people would like to have in-house counsel. If we could work that out to figure out how you get somebody. Uh, that can do all these things uh, for a reasonable price. You know, maybe next year we start talking about it in September or we start talking about it now to have some discussion as to how to make that work. But I tried to make that work. Um, but when you add in all the extra pieces, I mean, you're right back around 175 to 200. So uh, that's where I'm coming from. I'd like to, the board's indulgence to ask uh, Mr. Sullivan, the comment, because, you know, listen, we're the members of the Board of Selectmen. This is town council. We get to select that person. But town council really works um, on a daily basis with our town administrator. So uh, I'd like to hear uh, his thoughts if there's not an issue with the board. Mr. Sullivan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The one of the big things that the office hours brings to us is the face-to-face -face contact. Uh, we all use email every day, but one of the biggest parts the, that come with email are the issues of actually understanding what the people mean and the inflection. Probably one of the biggest things that leads to lawsuit is, lawsuits is miscommunication, and having somebody there to speak face-to-face understanding what the people are actually asking it's not a quick phone call or something written quickly to to an attorney via email is is invaluable i think it comes under probably one of the oldest oldest adages of, of an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure i think this format works i the working with attorney <coughs> bowen i can probably give several instances of him just being there, somebody mentioning a comment that has probably saved the town a good bit of litigation. Uh, so I would be in favor and recommend staying with Attorney Bowen for one year for town council. Thank you very much. Anything else? Have a motion? Uh, I move that we appoint uh, Attorney Richard Bowen uh, to the position of town council uh, for the period effective, uh, is it April 1 through March 31? Uh, this would be April 1, 2013 through March 31, 2014. Motion remains second. Anything else on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 4 zero, zero. Next up. Next, we have an inflammable fluids license for the Wareham Pollution, oh, pollution Control right. Facility. Yeah, okay. Mr. Sullivan, this was Mr. Campina's as well. I have to, this one, Mr. Campina didn't didn't bring up to me on there in his briefing. I think it's got to do with the renewal of his license. Uh, what happened? Does he need anything tonight? Well, they need to get this done. What happened was they were looking. F to go ahead and get the, you have to have the, the tanks approved, et cetera, to right. have them, and they couldn't find the paperwork where we had the certificate. So this is to go take care of something that was missing that should have been done. You need to vote, Alan? I think we should just vote on this, and then we you have to make, sign it as well. You want to make a motion? Motion to go ahead and up, update I have the- it. Uh, you have it there? There's a whole thing. Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I move. Uh, to approve underground fuel storage tanks at the following town of Wareham facility, Wareham Pollution Control Facility, 6 Tony's Lane, Wareham Mass, 02571. One 3,500-gallon diesel tank above ground, one 2,000-gallon diesel tank above ground, 
one 2,000 gallon diesel tank underground. Motion made and seconded. Anything else on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstain, four zero zero. And we have a chapter 61A. What are we doing now? Uh, 61A, this is uh, land that was going to be taken out of agriculture and converted over to, uh, there's a partial uh, subdivision on the property that they would go ahead and switch over. Uh, planning board last night voted uh, unanimously to uh, suggest not buying the piece of land. The town has the right to anything coming out of 61A has first right to buy land if they want to. Uh, we also, unfortunately, or fortunately, have a policy of the Board of Selectmen, I think it's 0207, if I remember right, uh, which states that we have to notify the Open Space Committee, the uh, Community Preservation Committee, and also the Wareham Land Trust of any of these lands that become available. They have 30 days from date of notice in which to let us know if any one of them is interested in purchasing the land. In other words, we can transfer our right to them. Uh, we have not heard back from those three uh, organizations yet. I believe they didn't get their information until probably a week or so ago. There was some confusion about the process. Um, so basically, we have, if I remember right, 120 days for the board to make their decision. Uh, I think this was somewhere in late February. We were notified February 28th. We'll try not to hold anybody up, but I believe on our meeting of April 9th, we should be able to go ahead and, and vote whether we want to purchase the land or not. When do we have to? When do we have to? Do we have to provide that notice? Since the planning board voted yesterday, right? When does the thirty-day clock start, Alan? Does it start from when we vote on it? No, the thirty days is because we have to refer this back to. We have to inform Open Space and CPC, right? Yeah, when we were notified of this by the, uh, I think it was. Uh, uh, some version of the Beaton family. I'm not sure the, the name of the actual piece on the document for the pay, for the land. The bottom line is once we're notified, it's checked in. Uh, we're supposed to notify those boards immediately, and they have basically 30 days to get back to us once they physically have received notification. So would that be today? You mentioned April 9th, bringing this back up on April 9th. Yeah, I think by April 9th. I believe the, I believe the girl said that uh, the stuff went out on the 12th, so it may have to be one week after the 9th. I hey, might be wrong. I'm asking you a specific question, you know. Let's you, put it on. You're going, back, you're going back to the Reverend story now. Go back to the 16th. Do we have, when does the 30 days start? 30 days start of when the actual people were, were notified by those boards. They have 30 Today? days. No, they were notified a while, a couple of weeks back. Oh. They were notified when the so it doesn't, does it, this, I believe. So, it doesn't, so the clock doesn't start with the planning board vote? No. Okay, that's what I'm trying to ask. No, we already have a vote from the conservation from two weeks ago. They okay. already came back no. Planning boards come back no. So that's all. CPC? CPC, we're waiting on their answer. We're waiting on open space, and we're waiting on Wareham Land Trust. Okay. And we should buy the 15th so of move April. This, so move this to? Uh, April 16th. April 16th? Yes. Okay. Works for me. All right, next up. Uh, Do we need, oh, I'm sorry. Do we need anything else on that? Uh, Town Council Bowen had some comment. I'll be, I'll be real quick, Mr. Chairman. Under Chapter 61A, Section 14, you have the right to assign the option to uh, nonprofit organizations, the Commonwealth, or, or even other municipalities. But just for the record, if you were to do so, the statute says that you would have to hold a public hearing before you could do that. So you would want to factor that into the 120-day total. Does that, include, does that include our own boards? No. <coughs> oh, so, okay. So they, so they, we still have the 30 days open for open space and now the CPC is still in question. Did you say open space was a no? No, open space has not re responded. Only not responded. Only the Conservation Commission has responded no and the Planning Board last night responded no. Right, okay, so, oh, here it is right here. Conservation's a no, planning's a no. So we're still waiting uh, on, on CPC. And as I say, we have a selectman's policy that lists the Wareham Land right. Trust. Okay. So we're fine with that. Yes. Anything else on that? No. Next up. Any town business? Any other town business? Not reasonably anticipated within the last 48 hours. Next up. Uh, we have preliminary discussion on department submitted warrant articles, but I thought we completed that. I think that's a typo. I Mr. Administrator, your report. Before we go, are we going to uh, vote on the uh, special town meeting warrant articles? I don't think we ever did that. 
I don't, I don't think he's. Uh, yeah, we went through those. Didn't we do those? Uh, well, we, I didn't don't do think a we didn't do a favorable action on that. I don't yeah, think. no, I don't think we did do that. We should. Uh, let's do it next week. I thought we're not meeting. When next is week. the uh, what is the date on that one? We that have April twenty second. Yeah, the uh, the issue with that is to try and give the information to the, the finance committee for them to to print, and I think the April 9th meeting may be a little late for them. Yeah. You want to go down? If you get the list in the packet. Uh, no, I don't have the list, and I didn't bring my copy. I, just, I apologize. I just was thinking about it today after too late in the day to say I'm anything. Sorry, I thought we did it when you gave us that explanation. Madam yeah, moderator is approaching, so uh, no, we we she, ne we never did our. Uh, Favorable yeah, vote as well. I'll ask Mrs. Winslow to go down the list. If anybody has any questions, Mr. Sullivan can answer them. Thank you, Madam Monterey. This is a special, special town vote. meeting. Right. So, Article 1 to see if the town will vote to transfer and appropriate the following sums of money within the budget lines voted in Article 6 of the May 24th, 2012 annual town meeting for the purposes here specified or to do or act in any manner relative thereto. Uh, so where are the budget lines? You wouldn't have that. That's when we get towards the the end there. And if there's interdepartmental transfers, you'd put that on there as a placeholder. That's what I'm saying most of this stuff is the right. information is not available. So. so my recommendation would be not really to do favorable action on it because you have no numbers on that one. Just abstain. Can I write on this copy, Claire? Sure. Uh, so I move favorable action on Article 1. Second. Send me motion being second. On the question. There is no there's no information. You're right. There's All no. in favor. Opposed, abstain. Aye. 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 Zero zero four. Article two to see if the town will vote to transfer from the FY twenty thirteen free cash the sum of one million two hundred eighty four thousand eight hundred twenty nine dollars to the health care trust fund or to do or act in any manner relative thereto. Uh, I move favorable action on Article 2. Second. Dr. Maiden seconded. Question? Um, <laughs> yeah. Explain. Let me just use one word because I don't want to be bleeped on this, so go ahead. Mr. Chair, I think what I will, if, if you'll allow me in front I will of you, allow you. In front of you, you have a memo, which is also included with the 2012 management letter that we had just received. Uh, I would like to read that, that memo directly and go through it before, uh, before anything else, if I may. Go right ahead. Dear Board, we have received the FY 2012 management letter from our auditors. It gives the most comprehensive look at the health trust fund that we have seen since before the health care holiday happened. One of the most important sections of the management letter is a brief history of the health care holiday, which is as follows. At the end of FY 2011, the town had a positive balance of $1,749,166 and needed to rebalance the fund with the employees by granting an employee-only holiday for $454,557 in FY12, and the fund would have remained solvent. The Massachusetts Department of Revenue Director of Accounts strongly advised the town to rebalance the fund and for the town to make their full contribution in FY2012 without taking a premium holiday. We supported the director's recommendation and made a similar recommendation. The town did not follow the recommendations given, did not balance the fund, and subsequently approved the health care premium withholding holiday of approximately two months to occur during fiscal year 2012. End quote from the management letter. The town's portion of the health care holiday began the day the fiscal year started as it only budgeted $4 million $119,235. The employees portion started on March 29th and ended on May 24th. When we received the basic financial statements in December, we were relieved to learn that the trust fund had a positive balance of $654,204.
However, when receiving the management letter, <laughs> the auditors have broken down the contributions, and it turns out the employee's balance in the trust fund should be $837,516. That means the town actually owes $183,312. The town must rebalance this fund to make sure that there are proper splits. We have an obligation to the employees to make sure that their portion is whole. The management letter provides us with actions that can be taken to rebalance the trust fund. <laughs> These are the actions to, re to rebalance the trust fund. Step one, there are three options available in step one. A, the town makes a general fund appropriation of $2,695,860. Not recommended, as we do not have the funds to do this. B, the town makes a general fund appropriation of $183,312 and then grants an employee-only holiday of $837,517. This option I don't recommend or it's not recommended as it leaves the trust fund with zero assets. Option C, the town transfers free cash of $1,284,829 to the health trust fund that makes the employee's portion whole. Then have the employee only holiday of $470,344. That would leave the town portion at $1,101,517 or 75% and the employee portion at $367,172 or 25%. This is a recommended plan as it is the least extreme and brings us to the required splits for FY12. Step two, fiscal 2013. After we rebalance the splits, I recommend that we take no further action as it relates to fiscal 2013 until after we have the fiscal 2013 audit completed. This makes sure that we take actions representing the true numbers in the trust fund. Step three, alternatives to self-insurance. It would be important, it will be important to seek out alternatives to the town remaining self-insured, such as the Mayflower Group, which is a, an insurance consortium. The town will not be able to enter the Mayflower Group in 2014, but this should remain an objective in the future. If we take the proper steps presented and follow the advice of our auditors, healthcare consultants, and the Department of Revenue, this problem will be fixed and will prevent any future issues. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sullivan. And just to um, remind folks of what we're talking about, back um, two years ago, I believe it was, there was, there was a recommendation by the town administrator to take out, uh, I forget what the actual number was now, 1.6 1. 1. 1. 1. out of our health care trust fund. Um, that was a pretty good sales job going to town meeting he made. In town meeting, uh, voted to allow that to happen. This is the remnants of that activity. As a reminder, I personally was opposed. I wrote an article uh, or commented on a Wayham Week, uh, Wayham Water, wasn't Wayham Water at the time, and the Wayham Observer. I tried to inform residents that this was the worst idea on the planet. And we had an example in front of us that Mr. Perry, who is the director, at the Department of Revenue shared with us, and that was the city of Lawrence. And there were many links um, to that debacle in Lawrence on these various websites. The board's vote, favorable action was three to two. Uh, Mrs. Winslow and myself voted no. The other three members of the board voted yes. Not that it matters, because it's a town meeting vote. Uh, and at town meeting, they approved Mr. Andrews' action, 
to go ahead and take that money out. It's been known all along. It's no secret that it has to be paid back. And here we are. So let's finish the story and tell us where the money's coming from that you have to find to pay this money back. We have certified free cash from fiscal 2012 in the amount of 1.284 million and that is where it would come from all that money that's why i'm requesting at the special town meeting to have that money transferred and uh, we knew when in december when we had the free cash certified uh, made the statement to the finance committee that we technically don't have free cash and i don't recommend appropriate to anything because we don't know what's going to happen with the health trust uh, we now have the audited we had the audited numbers, but the management letter breaks down truly what the splits are, and we know that we have to put that full amount in there. Uh, you know that will make sure that the fund has enough money in there. We are paying the bills out of there, and we'll be able to. But we really need to make sure that this money is put in there. Okay. Um, any comments from the board? Mr. Chair. Mrs. Winslow. I just want to say that as painful as this is, this is what needs to happen. There's a lot that we could have done with $1.2 million. Uh, I spoke to Mr. Perry from the DOR myself on the phone at the time. I knew then that this day would come. Uh, it's here. It's going to be important that we get this accomplished and put this behind us. And it was a town meeting vote. It, it was a town meeting vote, that and allowed you know, him to do that. You know, it's uh, you know, town meeting is town meeting, and sometimes people get very impassioned about things. And there was what a lot was of the split. While we're talking about it, what was the split? It was nine to the schools, just six under to the town, just under a million to the schools to take care of the stuff that they had put on through that era funds thing. And about a little less than six hundred thousand to the town. Right. If we hadn't, if they hadn't used that money, the town would have not had a balanced budget, and there would have been probably quite a bit of layoffs, etc. So, um, we use the word "kicking the can down the road." We kick the can down the road by basically borrowing money from another source. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mr. Uh, Mr. Tidebottom. Yeah, you know? now now the can's Sorry. been kicked into the wall, and it's not going any further. So this is what we're going to have to do. Uh, it still boggles my mind that we thought we could we could take this money uh, at town meeting, I guess, and, and didn't realize that the day would come when we had to put it back in. And this is exactly what you're seeing here. Uh, we borrowed it, you might say. We forgot about it. Mr. Sullivan didn't, but I think most of us did. And now we've been served a reminder that the bill is due. So this is what you're going to see. Uh, in the form of Article 2 on your special town meeting warrant on April 22nd. I believe we need to follow Mr. Sullivan's recommendations. Uh, again, as Selectman Winslow said, there's a lot of things we could have done with this money. Uh, a lot of capital items this town needs. There's roof of the high school. There's police cruisers that need to be replaced. There's any number of uses for this 1.2, 829. Uh, that we're going to have to kick back in here. And it's unfortunate that we didn't have, I guess, collectively uh, the courage as a town two years ago to confront the fiscal debacle then and deal with it on the spot. But we're going to have to deal with it now. Bottom line is you don't borrow money to pay for operations. No. And they took that money. Uh, you know, they were coming to town meeting, just like we are now, coming to town meeting with, uh, at this point. I think I heard... 1.85 we're still split in terms of where the school budget is versus the town budget I don't know if that's gotten any closer in the last few days and this is how we solved it that was his answer to solving it yeah. and he sold it to town it was a good salesman he sold it to town meeting people voted on it so there's no you can't blame the school committee you can't blame the board of selectmen you can't blame the town administrator uh, it was his idea but you can't blame him because town meeting said go ahead and do it Time to pay it back, unfortunately. Mr. Slavin. 
at this point, we just need to take care of what our situation is. The town needs to just figure out where it's at and, and look at it. I've only had a little bit of time to look at the management letter since we basically have been waiting for a while. And even though there's some dates that show stuff, we just got this as of today. And it's just been in our hands. I did have some time to look at it. And what sticks out to me more than anything else is on the draft on the first, actually page two, inadequate design of internal controls over significant amounts and transaction types. It's telling us that basically we have some serious deficiencies in our accounting system. And I will say, and again, I'm not blaming anybody, but I would say from the time we lost our town accountant back in 2006 to present, we've kind of been floundering as far as having someone in that position, having the pieces and the mechanisms in place. And this probably more than anything else is the reason why we're in this situation. Um, again, having the background I do, I'm kind of surprised that we were, and I, I take my responsibility myself as well. I should know better. You know, this is something we should have been looking at it. We were warned there could be a problem with it. Uh, we had a problem trying to maintain the 75-25 split. Uh, we should have had some process in there, maybe the auditing firm, and I'm not blaming them, should have given us some guidance to make sure we've stayed in that particular ratio split that we, and we would have picked up on this earlier. The bottom line is we didn't. The management letter tells us our controls are inadequate. We need to fix that, and that's what we need to do. And I believe uh, town administrator is basically a little ahead of the curve because he's looking for a financial director, which probably would have solved this problem if we had done this a year or two years ago. So even though we're not talking about that now, that financial director becomes that much more important. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Next. Uh, Article three, to see if the town will vote to approve the Upper Cape Cod Regional Technical School District Committee's vote on January 10th, 2013, to establish a stabilization fund pursuant to section 16G half of chapter 170, uh, I'm sorry, Chapter 71 of the Massachusetts General Laws said stabilization fund to be invested and to retain its own interest earnings as provided by law and further set up an operational line item to be created to transfer available monies into said stabilization fund or to do or act in any manner relative thereto. Mr. Chair, may I make a comment? Motion made. Second. Comment. Uh, my comment is that we have not seen uh, the folks from Upper Cape. They had shown up that Saturday morning, but the meeting had already closed. Are we going to be seeing them? I have. Uh, are, are they coming to the pre uh, town meeting, Madam Moderator? No. We don't generally, but I certainly would be happy to invite them. I believe they're Peter. coming to the finance committee meeting soon. We, Peter and I did go to the budget meeting of Upper Cape Folk. We did have discussions there with them. Uh, the town administrator on his budget, if you look at it, is level funding the Upper Cape at, I think, I figured just round off at 2.6 million. They're asking, they're originally asking us for a little over three. They came back to us at a little under three, two nine something. Um, the money that's putting being put aside is putting into a reserve account because most likely the four towns, with five towns total in the, in the regional school, if four out of the five towns vote for the budget as submitted, we all have to pay for it whether we agree or not. So that money is going to sit in reserve for the difference. No, I understand that, Mr. Slavin. This is the Upper Cape wanting to create their own stabilization. Oh, this, is so they, this is so they can build a sewer plant. Right. Yeah. I'm That's sorry. what they're looking for. Do you have a reserve account also for special town meeting or not? Or is it in the regular? No, no, we had taken it up. We had taken it off the regular. Right, it was, was moved off the regular to the special. On. Okay, I thought you were reading that one. And, and that was to buy more Same times. Moment again. We took it off and moved it. So that yeah, be, so to buy more time so we could try to learn more about it. Too, so yeah. we haven't had that opportunity. So I mean, I suppose we can. I, I don't see how we can vote favorable one way or the other. Favorite? Opposed. Aye. Aye. Abstain. Aye. Oh, I'm Aye. abstaining. Sorry. Two uh, zero two two. Sorry. I don't have a clue they want, they want to build about. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't have a clue about exactly what they want to do. How much it's going to cost us? I mean, all yeah, that it was information. Five hundred grand. I think it was the number, right? Yeah. Annually. 
They were, well, they, they were at least asking for it for right now. To put well, that would be the start of it was a stabilization fund in order to build a self-contained water pollution control facility on the, at the facility. We've That's already, what it was. We've already voted. Right. Next item. Article 4. To see if the town will vote to A. Approve the form of the tax increment financing TIF agreement by and between the town of Wareham and the LaFrance Hospitality Company on file with the Board of Selectmen. B. Designate as an economic opportunity area land and buildings located on one tax parcel containing four acres located on Rosebrook Way, as further depicted on the Wareham Town Assessor's Map 109A, Lot 1023A, respectively and pursuant to Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 23A, Subsection E and C, authorize the Board of Selectmen to execute the TIF agreement and to take such other actions as are necessary or appropriate to implement the TIF agreement. Motion made. Second. Second. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Okay. Article 5. To see if the town will vote to authorize the transfer of 25000 and no cents from receipts reserved for appropriation community events funds drawn from 70% of the hotel motel tax and 40% from the parking meter fund to the community event special revenue account. The funds will solely be used for the continuing support and assistance of community events, projects, activities, services, programs, and public improvements, which are of mutual interest to residents and visitors of the town, or to do or act in any manner relative thereto. Motion made. Motion made. Second. Second. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Four zero zero. Uh, Mr. Chair, with the indulgence of the board, Article 6 through 17 are all collective bargaining agreements. They're placeholders. Therefore, I would move uh, that this board take no action on those articles at this time as none have been settled. Second. Motion made and seconded. Anything on the question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? 4 zero, zero. Okay. Next. So that brings us up to the town administrator's report. There's nothing under that little bullet. I Let's think you've said a mouthful. Uh, yeah, the only already. other, the only other item, and I'm hoping you'll you'll dodge is uh, two of the members. Uh, I received an email from from Mr. Campina, uh, asking me to please find the certification for Phil Vary and Ron Godbout. You'd request that I mention their accomplishments in town administrator's report. They have attained specific licenses on there uh, for for their positions. Uh, there's acronyms that I can't really decipher but the the significance to the town or their certifications is that we now have employees nationally certified to inspect our underground pipes and our manholes and certify the conditions of those pipes if we were to apply for SRF funding to replace pipes that are structurally in failure or have excessive infiltration and inflow their certifications can be quantified by an engineer thereby saving the rate pairs of Wareham a considerable amount of money. And in a, I appreciate any recognition for the two employees that are valuable and continue to strive to gain knowledge on be, to benefit the water pollution control facility. So Mr. Mr. Vary and Mr. Godbout, we, I appreciate what they've done. Uh, Mr. Chair, maybe we could get some certificates and put them in there, give them a copy and put it in their file. Outstanding. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. May I ask the town administrator a question, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, we'll let him finish. Are you all set? It does. Madam uh, Clerk. Thank Mrs. you, Mr. Winslow. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Sullivan, there's been talk about not funding the recycling center, the $8,000, and um, I have an email from the recycling coordinator who had heard this as a rumor. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed that, that this conversation hasn't been had with her. Uh, but I'm also receiving a lot of feedback from the community uh, that they would not, they're not going to be very happy uh, with this. The recycling center is a bustling place. As you know, it's more than just a recycling center. They have uh, a book. Um, I think they call it a shack, but it sounds like a bad word for it. Um, and it's a, it's a very busy place. Uh, it's, it's a service that 
costs us very little money, is staffed by volunteers, uh, very dedicated volunteers, by the way. Um, folks commit to doing hours there, and they're there. Um, I've I worked throughout my life, a lot of fundraisers and other events. It's hard to get volunteers to show up, but they come. So um, I'm Good wondering question. if you um, can let us know what your plan is in terms of meeting uh, with the recycling coordinator. Uh, and if you are going to defund that, then there needs to be a plan in place to shut it down. Thank you. Bef before I'd made the decision, I'd met with Jack Dixon of the recycling committee, informed him that that was the way I was leaning on there. I did email the recycling coordinator afterwards when I found out that she had only heard through there, uh, through the meeting and did apologize to her. And uh, my my recommendation stays the same at this time. Well, that's that's your recommendation, and we're going to have to agree to disagree on that. Um, you know, we spend a lot of money in areas that, you know, eight thousand dollars for a viable service that the community enjoys. As as one woman so aptly put it to me, we don't give them trash pickup, <laughs> but you know, at least they have the center. Uh, also, I think as part of your plan to close down the recycling center, we're going to need to find alternatives. Um, you know, the aim of the recycling center had been to encourage recycling amongst households. Many households in Wareham do not have trash pickup, uh, and they do take their trash to the dump, and not all the dumps have uh, appropriate I th and facilities. I, I appreciate it. I'm sorry if... Uh, if I interrupt it, it's not to shut down the recycling center. It's merely not to, to provide the 8,000, which I believe funds the paid position there. That's correct. But part of the recycling coordinator's uh, responsibilities is to file the appropriate reports with DEP and other things that um, are necessary for the center to keep operating. She also files for grant dollars. Uh, she also schedules the volunteers. So absent the $8,000 paid coordinator, there isn't anybody to do that job. So... Unless you had a volunteer coordinator. Uh, if you can find a volunteer coordinator. Well, you just think you're, you're assuming that nobody would step up. You don't know that, right? Um, he doesn't have to... Sh if he has somebody to do all the filing and the paperwork and to continue to volunteer and without the, the $8,000, then the grant, he can still keep the center open. And the grant writing, which funds some of the operations so but it doesn't mean that just because the 8,000 is gone doesn't mean that the whole thing ends necessarily um, well well let's see if what mr. Sullivan can come up with well we have time to uh, time to get that done I mean that's what July 1 June you know I mean ask for volunteers try to uh, beat the bushes maybe someone out there I've always uh, I'm a big fan of folks writing checks um, for donations. Uh, if somebody has $8,000, Mr. Sullivan would be happy to accept it right in the memo line for the Wayham Recycling Center. And there's your $8,000. Beat the bushes. Hmm. It's not up to just Derek, but everybody can go out and beat right. some of these philanthropists. $8,000 is not a lot of money. It, it is absolutely not a lot of money out of a $60 million budget. Or for a donation. You just saw where we have to pay all this money back for sins of the past. Uh, I, I understand that, but so. we're also spending a lot of money in the upcoming budget well, on other things. And so we need to, we need, we'll find a good philanthropist to give us the $8,000. Go ahead and find a You have to have a positive attitude, right? I have a very positive attitude, right. but the community's not happy to hear this news, and well, neither I'm am I. I'm going to debate that based on this prior conversation, but um, I think we need to go out and bang the bushes, and we'll get somebody to give you the money. Yeah. But, Mr. Chair, I do appreciate Even the Even if we got two donors at 4000 yeah. right? Yep. As long as they write the memo in there, that's all you need is $8,000. That'll be our next campaign. And I do get appreciate the input out. and letting me know what the, what the community is and, and giving some direction hey, on there. So I appreciate that. Get your checkbook with you. Sure. Give me 4000 bucks. Okay. Anything else? Please on reports. Mr. Teitelbaum? Uh, I just have one thing to say. Uh, 
under this category. Uh, we have an election next Tuesday, and while I'm not going to comment the directly check? on, are you no. Writing the are you going to say you're writing the check? He's got the money. If I find any in Grand Cayman in July, I'll write the check. Okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, you know, as we know, we have an election next Tuesday, and regardless of the outcome of the election, uh, when we, re we reconvene on April 9th, we're going to have a different board. Uh, the seat that's been was abandoned in January over there is going to have somebody sitting in it, and it's possible that we may not see uh, one or both of our incumbents come back. Uh, and I just wanted to say that uh, it's been a very interesting year working with them. Uh, it's been very informative. It's been very educational. Uh, we've had our moments when we didn't get along, but that's in the nature of, of doing the business of the town. That's going to happen. Uh, we all approach it from different perspectives, and sometimes our perspectives will clash. Uh, but one thing I want, I want to make known is that regardless of anything, uh, there is no questioning the love uh, for this town that both Chairman Holmes and Clerk uh, Winslow have exhibited. And uh, uh, I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful for their service. And if we don't see them back here on April 9th, I wish them luck in their lives going forward. Thank you. Oh, thanks. Mr. Slavin? Well, How does that come under liaison report? It does. I snuck it. That's OK. Uh, we'll have to catch up. I've missed the last two or three weeks on this. The action committee, which had to do with school buses, met today. Um, and we basically voted and we have a consensus and it will be going forward. Uh, the plan is to reduce uh, the buses for the middle school and the high school and basically uh, the uh, Minot and Deca school will be running 16 buses rather than 22 is the plan on the reduction. There will be 80 middle school and 50 high school students which will be within one mile of the school which is basically here and those, those 130 students will be walking to school. The, um, we'll be able to pull six of the older buses out of service, which really aren't safe to use. Um, we, will, uh, we voted to maintain the program as it is today. The bottom line is no matter what we do, the bids from the outside firms would cost the town dollar-wise more than what if we run it ourselves. The reason being, so everybody understands, it's not something we want to do. The bottom line is the town has a major infrastructure in place paid for. Any bus company coming in when they bid doesn't have that. So when their bids are given there, it will always be more expensive dollar-wise. The town doesn't have 500000 400000 or $300,000 to come up with a difference. So as for this next year, we voted to go ahead for the year 2014, continue the system running by the through the town as non-net spending and the school department running the buses, but we'll be running less buses. There unfortunately will be 130 children walking, but they will be middle school and high school only. Um, and we also voted to go ahead with this modified plan as a recommendation with the town, through the town administrator's budget of $1.5 million for the non-net spending for transportation. And that's where we are. These were hard decisions to make that not made lightly, but it had to be done and it's, you know, obviously if we had given them 1.6, they probably could have taken care of it, but the bottom line is we don't have the money. So we had to make a decision and we made it today. This will go back to the school committee and of course will go to town meeting floor as well. That takes care of that. Community events committee, we had an issue uh, that came up. There seems to be a flaw in the article that was written at town meeting originally for the community events committee back in I think it was 2007, it was effective 2008, had to do with how, it was a two-piece article. One was a special act, one was a regular bylaw. The problem we have with that is that the way the funding mechanism was put in place, it really only funded it by language for one year. Um, what will happen is there's money in the account, they'll be able to continue the events for this year and part of next year because of the money that's still sitting there. Uh, we'll, we'll have to come back to fall town meeting with some language to go back and correct the special act and probably most likely, and I'm speaking a little ahead, we'll probably have possibly a set dollar amount or possibly a set percentage contribution that'll be different than what it is now. Next, um, smile. Uh, Holy Cross offers uh, training to uh, planning and other licensing boards. I've been going for quite a while being on the planning board, but it was interesting. I went this year because of some of the, my 
different boards that I also sit as a representative to. There was issues on the medical marijuana. Yeah, if you give me a minute here. Boom, boom. On medical marijuana, we had one town, uh, I think it may have been Western, I'm not sure, uh, actually passed a ban on marijuana dispensaries. Uh, the state Supreme Court overturned that and said no. Uh, I had asked the uh, town planner to look at doing a what we call a, a temporary moratorium, and it turns out that it's perfectly legal, and so we're a little ahead of the curve because we had that for our town meeting vote as well. And that is completely okay to do. That will give us one year lead time. Uh, the actual rules and regulations will not come down from the state until 329. The finalized version will be late May, and at that point there, the towns will probably be then if they don't have a, a moratorium in place, we'll then have these dispensary clinics will be available for to apply for. On, uh, there was other issues on solar, and there were issues on financing and infrastructure. Again, I believe it helped uh, not only the CETA director, but also the town planner, and also the chairman of the planning board. There was a lot of interesting different issues that would help us quite a bit, and I believe they also picked up some interesting information on some new rules and regulations for community preservation act as far as what you can do again with some money and it looks as if there is some ways of helping out the Warham Housing Authority which we thought was more restricted it may not be as much as we have. Mm -hmm. Continuing along I did a thing with the MMA legislative breakfast a week ago. It was interesting sitting with other town administrators, town selectmen. Um, I think we had one or two mayors, we had three uh, we had three representatives from the House, one from the Senate there, and we had some interesting discussions about how things were. The uh, governor's budget, um, as presented, has some serious issues about being passed. Uh, it's going to have some adverse effects to the towns and the cities because we, not, we, not be, we may not be getting what we think we're going to get. McKinney-Vento money on the school side looks like it's being slashed, and there are other issues coming down the line. And just as a typical example of... Of that, I've got uh, the housing authority if that was talked about regionalizing to save money. The information I got back that was dead on arrival. They didn't think that would ever pass through the House of Senate. And uh, there was another thing on the federal level, which was quite interesting, is that what they call sequestration funding, which is about 5%. This was done by the president and was passed on March 1st. It basically takes 5% of the money out of the budget and, and it, it pulls it out. It's not available. Unfortunately, it affects community block grants and other related types of grants. We do have a community block grant. It could affect us down the line as well. And we won't have any idea for a while when and if it will affect us, which is not very good. So we need to watch that closely because we might be planning on money that may not be coming. And there was another issue also on unrestricted general aid. There's new formula coming in for local aid. There's $31 million in 2014. Uh, we'll have a chance to reduce the funding later on, but we need to look at this program because we might be able to pick up some extra money as well. Uh, we also discussed uh, the Chapter 90 funds and how that's going to work. There's issues there. There was a, a suggestion made by several of the people that um, the Chapter 90 money, we don't sometimes get approval till May, June, July, and if you get approval in July for your funds, it's usually too late to go out and, and put things in place to put a project together you know, and actually have a building project done. You've got to do it months in advance. So they were looking at saying to the state, okay, you're going to give us X number of dollars. Let us borrow this money on a bond and let us run our own. In other words, the state every year gives you so much money, but they want to go out and allow the towns to go ahead and borrow on a bond projects for like a year, two, three years out. And they'll use the money that comes in each year to pay the bond back as it comes due each year. It was an interesting concept. I'm not sure whether it's going to go very far. Uh, there's a bill for the veterans. Right now, when we have the veterans' payments come in, the town pays 25%. Federal government through the state pays 75 There is much as 12 months to 18 months late getting us the payments. Uh, not a very good situation for the towns. There's a bill in place to pay 100% through the feds. Also a possibility of the state taking it over and processing the payments direct so the town doesn't have to deal with it. This may or may not save us money. Um, there's a bill on, uh, on, for EMS on the ability to set rates for reimbursement. This is something the town administrator is going to have to look at, which is something we've not been able to do before, is setting rates for our emergency medical services. Um, 
and like I said, the, the, the Veterans Bill reform, and I think that's what I had. We also discussed Proposition 2 and a half. Uh, it was interesting because almost everybody there said two and a half is no longer working for the cities and towns. It doesn't allow us to even begin to stay up with what the costs and everything are going. And hopefully, maybe we'll actually have some traction that people start to think about dropping two and a half and coming to some other system because we cannot survive with two and a half. We keep falling behind year after year. And the other piece I have is we had an issue, I think, at the OPL about the wind turbine project. Uh, I want people to understand that that project um, is done by Keith Mann, and the Mann family. Uh, the wind turbines are quite a ways away from any any actual built, even in Plymouth. They were all permitted in Plymouth without any issues, and they're all in place as far as their permitting goes, and it really has no effect uh, in a health issue with the people in Wareham. I, was, I think the information really wasn't clear. That project also is on hold for us uh, due to the fact that we basically use, we think, 7.4 megawatts you know, per year as far as the town side goes. We had some issues trying to figure out what Wareham is as a town because we have two districts. We didn't know whether the districts were included in the total or not. Uh, the Mass Department of Public Utilities had to come up with a ruling, which they haven't come up with yet, how that works. Bottom line is that if you only use 7.4 megawatts during the year, there is no sense buying net metering credits that say eight or 10 of them if you can only use 7.4. We've already contracted for six through our solar project. Our water pollution control facility is looking at doing a 1.4 to 1.5 project uh, at the facility, which is solar also, but depending on how we stand with our numbers, he can either do it what they call in front of the meter or behind the meter. I'm not going to confuse anybody right now with the information on that, but the bottom line is it affects whether we have any other capacity left. So there is a chance that we may not have any capacity even to do any net metering credits for the wind turbine. And it's kind of unfortunate because even though people have issues with wind turbine, financially it's a much better return on your investment. And that's my it for today. Mr. Winslow. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have already mentioned the concerns about the uh, recycling budget uh, in the proposed budget, so we won't rehash that. Uh, the Library Board of Trustees uh, lost a member a couple weeks ago. Um, they're very saddened by that. However, they do have uh, an opening, and from time to time, depending upon there are other members' schedules. They, they sometimes have some quorum issues. So if there's uh, anybody out there who has an interest, um, Martha was a very uh, reliable person uh, for those meetings, so they could always count on her. Uh, and some of the members have some uh, business obligations and some, uh, some other obligations. So uh, if you wouldn't mind submitting an application, that would be greatly appreciated. And that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Do you have anything? Yeah, I just want to mention that uh, young Mr. Boyer, who's, who didn't make it this evening, is traveling to Washington on a trip um, as an ambassador. Um, I didn't have a lot of details on the trip, but um, he's supposed to be leaving in the next week or so. And I invited him to come. Uh, obviously, there was a snafu in scheduling. And um, as we do with the other youngsters, I invited him to come back uh, during citizens' participation uh, when he returns from his trip. So we wish him well, safe travels, and we look forward to him uh, coming back and giving us a, uh, we'll make a big to-do about it when he gets back, that he was an ambassador uh, from this area sent to Washington. That's all I had. Mr. Motion Sullivan, to anything else? Mr. Bowen, anything else? Uh, just want to say thank you very much. For what? The um, honor of being able to serve you. Oh, wow. Mr. Sullivan will be in touch with you in regards to that, and, uh, and he'll probably be trying to get some more money out of your pocket to reduce the fee, so don't worry about that. You know how that goes. Uh, you're welcome. And uh, I think um, it's been a pleasure working with you if I'm not returned here. Um, and I think that um, um, I've enjoyed this. Um, I can't make a campaign speech, but um, brothers have been born here. Let's just put it that way. 
Um, anything else? Forgotten? Mr. Barrows, you got, you got anything? If they're with if they're within a mile and they're in the middle school or the high school, there's a hundred there's eighty eighty in the middle school and fifty in the high school. I don't have who or what that's what they gave us today. That's that's the decision of the school committee as a plan. Well, the reason why I say that is they they take into consideration that a lot of places don't have sidewalks. They understand that they're not happy but they're having they a want to be it's a very tough decision to make, yes. <laughs> Anything else, Mr. Barrows? Anybody else? Got anything? All right. All right. Uh, well, like you, Mr. Mr. Holmes, I just want to say that this uh, this has been a unique experience. So, <laughs> if I'm not back on April 9th, I I have made uh, some pretty I have some pretty amazing memories of this. Motion. I look forward to coming back, but oh, I can't well. talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. Right. Second. Second. Uh, most of you second. Anything on the question? Have a great night. Uh, aye. Aye.